scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Uh, it's important that we do not allow the frequent activity week after week to get us carried away such that we do not... Uh, realize that god is actually going somewhere with us this is not just an endless pursuit a loyalty to a vision a loyalty to a religious activity that keeps us uh, psychologically healthy that we're in touch with god this is more than that praise the lord it's important that we we understand that this is not just a ministry this is not just a church this is a move of god and that we are through this medium connecting to the bigger picture that which god is doing upon the surface of the earth when you realize this you will come with every sense of seriousness hallelujah the second thing i want to talk very quickly about is to fine-tune our expectations it's important that whenever you come for koinonia generally speaking whenever you go to any ministry any church um, take time to study the operation of god in that area because god works in different ways through different platforms according to many factors his predetermined counsel for them their level of alignment to his will the level of permission they have given him in that season to manifest are we together now when god calls a people when god commissions a ministry an assignment there are usually certain graces please pay attention graces anointings and dimensions of the operation of the spirit that is um committed to those people so those who come must be aware that i am coming to a ministry that through grace and through corporate alignment have been able to activate certain dimensions of realities in the spirit and that coming to that ministry can make it possible i was teaching the prayer department on tuesday during their prayer and i was telling them that individuals carry prophetic atmospheres are we together now when you come under the influence of their atmospheres within that period you can tap into the reality that would not have happened with your atmosphere are we together now so when you keep doing that over a long time there is a transference there is an impartation but you see if you don't realize what is obtainable bishop oyedeko will say proximity is not equal to connectivity that you are close to an anointing and an atmosphere does not guarantee that you will contact something tangible so the lord impressed in my heart really to remind us again to let us know the dimension of him that is available in this place please um ladies and gentlemen i want us to understand that this is not some ambition of a man to try to reach people I know that there are pastors who love teaching as a vocation they just love to see sinners saved that's wonderful but um this is not one of those platforms believe me 
I want you to know that what is happening right now is pivotal to the universal move of the spirit. This is not a minor contribution to what God is doing on earth. If you, if you see it that way, you will, you will not give your best. There's been a lot of prophecy about Zaria. Right from before some of us were born. There's been a lot of prophecy about this that is happening right now and in this season. So, we're not just stumbling into a move of God resident within the north. No. There is a mystery behind this move of God that is coming in this season and what God is doing. And so, I want us to understand that we are prophecy being played. Jesus, in the book of Luke chapter 4, the Bible says, reading from verse 16 downward, that he took the book the, the 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 scroll where it was written about him where prophet isaiah wrote about him right and he began to read it the spirit of the lord is upon me and then when he read down he said this day in other words what you see is a manifestation of that when the holy ghost came on the day of pentecost peter told them this is that in other words look you are now seeing the manifestation of something I pray that one day as you study the Bible, you will see koinonia there. That as you study, you will suddenly connect and say, God said this will happen. We are seeing that this is not just a circumstance, but this is prophecy. Hallelujah. I need to tell us this so that our hearts be prepared. It's very, very important. There is nothing, listen, there is no major move of God that happens without being spoken about. I used to see these days, years ago in visions. I never knew it would be this way. Glimpses and pictures of this and even the next levels after this. And I knew that it was you see these kinds of platforms is called an election of grace it's not about prayer and fasting it's not about just wishing no everyone who desires to press into god as we'll be learning can find a place in destiny however there is an election of grace are we together now god always has a move in every territory and every city and it just so happens that by divine predetermination the hand of God can rest upon individuals and he will open them uniquely to certain dimensions of his person and vest them with responsibilities to reveal that dimension within their territory this is one of such things you are saying please value it I want you to value it I want you to value it the days that will come will show you that this is not just an ambition of a man of God. You know how pastors say, look, we are going places. And the members say, I'll be there with you. This is not one of those things. It's not just that we are going places. You will see how this move fits into prophecy. It will happen. I've lived my entire life and spent my life like the wise men who kept looking at the stars walking this season never knew that it would be a privilege to be one of those who will frontier dimension of this move but i was more than willing to participate i was desperate i i insisted that the move will not happen in my absence hallelujah so you must you must be very intentional Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if you are here seated in this place tonight, it's because there is prophecy upon your life. Believe that. If there was no prophecy upon your life, you would not be here. I'm not motivating you. I am telling you that among all these people, there are still some people who this prophecy resonates with. That's why God made sure that you have to be here in this season. And it's important to pay attention so you don't lose your place. 
the fact that there is an election upon your life does not guarantee that you will manifest it are we together yeah the principle of substitution is that which we see in this in, in scripture again and again that the mandate of a man not just his mantle his entire assignment can be given to another we read about saul in the bible right saul the son of kish a time came he was there seated on the throne but the entire mandate had been given to him terah the father of abraham the very assignment of abraham terah was to be the father of nations but he messed up because of lack of alignment and the mandate went to abraham when judas iscariot betrayed jesus christ god insisted that there had to be a replacement for him you see that so brothers and sisters please realize that for every one of us seated here you are not seated here for your sake you are seated for the sake of a generation listen for their sake listen for the sake of your children listen for the sake of those who are hungry for god but may never have access to come to these territories listen as a school pay attention as though you are being trained for something great i've always given my life and the presence of god and the word of god utmost seriousness you never see me distracted in the house of god and in the presence of god you must please pay attention this is not just a time of worship a worship service it's an impartation there is something happening to you there is growth there is ascendance in the spirit four things i want you to always expect when you come here number one this place is a place of encounter please never forget this a place of encounter is the hallmark of this ministry encounters encounters with jesus encounters with the spirit of the living god encounters with the word of god and by word of god i don't just mean what you are holding in your hand the scripture that has been explained that has the breath of the spirit upon it capable of producing results in your life encounters whenever you come here you must expect it that something resonates from eternity to your spirit you know that god is in this place through the worship through the testimonies this program was designed intentionally to stimulate encounters from the opening prayers the worship and everything that happens it's, it's intentional i want you to know that it was done with encounters in mind so that whether you are seated inside or outside as you hear the word beyond a man there will be a remarkable encounter visionary encounters yes but that the reality an encounter is an experience that supernaturally communicates the reality of a thing to you it's called an encounter when when i touch this flower for instance my touching it gives me a feel an emotional connection to it that's what an encounter is that by the agency of the holy spirit something happens to you in this place that draws you near that, that nearness of the presence of god is experienced number two whenever you come to this place expect remarkable transformation the lifespan of your spiritual stubbornness when you come here is one day in 24 hours something must start fighting you are we together no matter how hardened you are when you come into this place you can choose to argue but it's like a virus it has caught up with your spirit 
Hallelujah. You can pretend uh, there's nothing usual about it, but I tell you, if you come for just one meeting and you never attend, you will never be able to be comfortable with the devil again. It's, it's like a cancer. It's a, see, there are mysteries that support the things we do. It's not just happening. There is a revelation that sponsors this. Have you seen a man, you talk to a man and he pretends as though what you said did not get to him. Then when he goes back, he starts thinking about it and say, Kai, but this person cheated me. That's what happens here. So when the word of God comes upon your spirit, there is a system that has been designed by grace that it stays. It sticks to you and starts fighting everything that is not of God. Hallelujah. Radical transformation. I trust that God will grant us grace that we will be able to fetch in the testimonies from the now millions of people, literally without exaggeration, of people that have been blessed just through these teachings. 70% of the people that have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me as a person. There is a mystery to these teachings. The presence of God and its power to change people. I've gone for meetings and seen people talk and I thought I was hearing myself. And I looked at them and they said, Sir, you have never seen me but I have 200 of your messages. I have 250 of your messages. I have your message till last week. That's the power of transformation. To change states. Right? So when you come here, there is a paradigm shift. The messages are so designed, not just to whet your appetite spiritually. There are lots of messages that stimulate you to desire the spirit more. But there are not definite things you hold. I teach especially in points because I want your mind to be able to hold on to something. When you want to create a paradigm shift, the new ideas you are bringing must be clear enough for the people to understand and receive. We are replacing old philosophies. We are replacing old ideas about God, about life. And this is happening by the power of the word. Hallelujah. Mental and intellectual alignment, still part of radical transformation. One of the things that the Lord taught me as I have worked with the Lord and I have incorporated it even in this ministry is balance. Everybody say balance. I've said it again. One of the things that I have, um, I have been disturbed about in the body of Christ is the degree of imbalance imbalance can hurt you as much as a lie are, are you following me now imbalance can do you almost the same catastrophe as a lie imbalance and lies is like a man who is inside fire then you bring him out and leave him in a desert it's better than fire, but you will still die. Are we together now? So, you notice this intentional balancing of spiritual realities as we teach. Because it is important. God will judge me if I mislead you. I take advantage of your openness. I must commend the loyalty of the people everyone who comes around to this ministry i know you love me i know you love the word of god you believe in what god is doing and there are many of us here who have opened up our hearts that everything that comes from this altar is of god and so i as a person and the leadership generally we owe a responsibility to make sure your convictions are such that can stand the test of time the bible says to be careful less what you call light be darkness you can hold on to a wrong philosophy forever. You can excel in a dimension of the knowledge of God and fail in another understanding. That you understand God in the area of prayer and fasting does not mean you understand other facets of Him. Chances are that if I teach you on the anointing and the Holy Spirit, you will think I'm a remarkable preacher until you hear my perspective on marriage. My perspective on marriage can be so imbalanced and faulty 
but you will leverage on my accuracy are we together now you will leverage on my accuracy in the area of the anointing to mean i know what i'm saying that's the reason why every man of god must be on a consistent passion a passionate pursuit to update his spiritual curriculum as far as the move of God is concerned. So you don't mislead people. I've heard ministers that I respect their perspectives in different areas. But I've heard them communicate other areas and I am shocked to see their degree of ignorance. It's like someone who, imagine someone who is growing and one hand is growing so well and then one leg is not growing you can imagine that kind i have been obsessed about balance one of my greatest concerns in life is that at the end of my life it will not be that i believe they lie hallelujah and that i've taught that lie to people that have influenced millions of people to believe a lie and they are running with that lie and then i ruin their lives with no opportunity to recall them back brothers and sisters this is why we pray for utterance we don't pray because we are scared of preaching we pray for alignment in the spirit we pray that the things that are communicated that even after 10 years that even when there is need for upgrading it doesn't become that that was a lie and men of god here those who are pastors maybe inside outside i challenge you do not take for granted. Never trivialize the place of adequate spiritual preparation before you come to the pulpit to preach. There are pastors, now I'm not against people, but there are pastors who sit down, cross their leg, watch football, you know, eat and do everything and say, ah, it's time. And they just come and say, look, where did we even stop last week? No, don't play with people like that. Take them seriously. The church institution is the most powerful mind control institution in africa it's more powerful than banks it's more powerful than schools you're only in the university or any institution of learning for three four or five years or six years and then you are done but every sunday every wednesday every friday every thursday and some churches every day you are in the church submitting your spirit to the influence of a man do you know what it means to sit down and allow a man transfer his ideologies to you that's a risk it's a big risk because our realities are framed by our ideologies so you must be sure that the person you are submitting your spirit and your mind to you will inevitably make decisions based on the parameters he's given you i will not live to mislead people i won't teach you error that's the reason why we labor and at any time I find out that what I've communicated is not accurate, I do not have any embarrassment to come back and say, look, let's realign. We have seen something clear. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? Expect transformation. You can measure transformation. Your degree of change. Your thinking the way you analyze things your comprehension of the workings of the spirit this is part of the indices that we use to measure spiritual maturity you cannot be uh, coming here week in week out whether indoors or outside and then something is not changing about your life you can't be doing the same things saying the same things having the same convictions no the word of god alters your convictions something about you must change something about you must change something about your prayer life must change something about your passion for the word something about your interpretation of the word something about the ideology of god you knew growing up must shift it must be altered are we together now something about the ministry of the holy spirit must change in your life if that is not happening you are not changing you are not changing. I detest stagnancy in my life like cancer. I detest it. I'm obsessed with progress. I like to see progress. That's why I hate stagnancy. 
anyone who is close to me knows that i'm constantly in a state of transition change you can't be in the same level for a long time intellectually physically when we look at developing nations or underdeveloped nations part of the hallmark of underdevelopment is stagnancy there are some of us there was one stone near your house from the time you were born that stone is still there nobody has had the initiative that why don't we make this road better it's still there as a monument that does not motivate anything only brings pain and regret you remember they flogged you near that stone you remember that's where they drove you out of the house nothing to inspire you the word of god should change you that at the end of every koinonia service you should just sit down like this and get up i like it when the word of god enters people and i study the reactions of people to the word not just oh preach preacher that's there's a place for that but that your spirit is is receiving something and you're saying look what am i doing is is god is giving me too much opportunity i'm wasting grace i'm making the word of god of non-effect let the word of god challenge me he said the spirit entered into me ezekiel 2 from verse 1 and 2 and set me upon my feet the spirit entered when he spake unto me he brought an idea that is superior to that which i have known and it compels change change with results immediately that you can get up and make certain resolutions immediately make certain vows and commitments enter into certain strong personal covenants with god on account of what you have heard the bible says meditate on these things he says give yourself wholly to them he says that you're profiting brothers and sisters ask god how much i pray for you i don't think i pray for you i pray for myself one tenth of the way i pray for you and my prayer is not god give them cars give them houses that's a stupid prayer the prayer is oh god let there be such radical fellowship of the mystery that's what will produce every other thing you know what it means to have fellowship with a mystery that you come into oneness with these mysteries you know them you are persuaded about their reality and they begin to produce remarkable results in your life financial prosperity spiritual growth is never a thing of joy to me i don't know about other preachers but i hate being the only one i know it's supposed to be a wise business strategy but i hate being the only one who can produce certain levels of results unlike many preachers it is my joy when I see the grace and the anointing being reproduced in people, it gives me great joy. So it pains me when after a long time, our level of spiritual metamorphosis is slow. We must step up this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen. You see, if you don't step up, a time will come, you will think, that what I'm teaching you is a lie because you will be frustrated. Are we together now? You will be frustrated. Number three. The third thing you must expect every time. This will even help you to know the kinds of people to invite. You must expect revival revival and awakening this is a place a portal in the spirit where people who have been weary spiritually where people who have given up maybe people who used to carry mantles and graces pastors who used to walk with fire churches that used to burn something happened for whatever reason this is the place to come and find restoration that you can say look i don't know what is wrong with me I used to love God. I used to be passionate. Now, I don't know what is happening. Let me go and find out. Part of the vision God has given us is to make this place a place of refiring. 
a place of revival hallelujah that in in the days of the generals they had places the doors of the churches were open 24 hours there were times it was like they had hosted heaven in that city you didn't even need a pastor if something was wrong with you just go there and lie down we've had a few of those places even in this place many of you do not know some years ago in the campus where used to be lawn tennis court there were so much spiritual investments in that place it became an open heavens literally that's when you see people carry their results probation they just go and lie down with rechargeable no prayer they are just saying lord kill me here if if it it, it, it was called a court where matters of destiny were settled a sister who no brother is coming to just goes there and say lord i'm here i'm here for you I'm, I'm here for you and i'm telling you mantles that fell upon people this is a preface to what i'm about to share tonight we must restore mantles back to the church we must restore physical portals on earth where men can run to like cities of refuge it's a terrible thing when your spirit is affected and there's no place like a hospital where you can go and be sure imagine if all the hospitals in nigeria go on strike will give birth on the road people will die in cars the moment somebody has an accident we run and you see the confidence of the doctors you are welcome they don't move with hospitals around they station it in a place and you see all kinds of skills to get to the hospital those who trek those on bike they just want to get there because they know if i arrive i'm i don't even know what is wrong with me i think it's headache but let the doctor speak and when certain doctors try and it fails they refer you to certain people who have labored in this medical field they are called specialists they look at you and they say go and lie down we're operating you something is wrong ah doctor what lie down we have seen many of these kind of cases you are not feeling fine Do we have those kinds of spiritual platforms in the body of Christ today? Every city is supposed to have these provisions. When a city does not have that provision, there is no apostolic authority over their city. The hallmark of true apostolic authority is to have a center that represents the place of kingdom activities in a city. Where the law springs forth and governs the activities of a city. Please, I want you to hear what I'm saying. You can know that darkness prevails over a city by finding out whether there are apostolic authorities. It's not a name. It's not a title. It's an office. They are the gatekeepers of the happenings of God in that city. They communicate in partnership with the prophetic when seasons change and they alert the church. When darkness is about to enter that city, they are the eyes that see and stand on behalf of the city stop koinonia for one month and see what will happen in this city that's when you will know what we represent in the spirit never make a mistake that is just the activity of young people god's idea is that in every city there must be apostolic authorities but because of the disalignment of many people those who have called up have, have been called have refused to align God will have to multiply grace and spread the influence of a territory to take care of others while he raises those who will stand there. This is the concept of multiplication of grace. When people refuse the alignment and the price of the spirit, God will have to come to his servant and say, this was initially not in your curriculum, but to not to frustrate my counsel, I know how uneasy it is for you but i will multiply your grace you see that when i multiply your grace i will stretch your boundaries so that your apostolic coverage like a territory will also enter certain dimensions you will know when an apostolic authority has expanded you will see the influence of that ideology see let me tell you the church in nigeria our order of ministry is wrong because the heads of the church in nigeria are pastors i don't mean pastors like kaito it was never that design but there is a sudden restoration
if a pastor ever functions and a prophet ever functions and an evangelist ever functions if they do not do this in affiliation with apostolic authorities they will get into error because you see the primary of an assignment of the of the apostolic office is not just teaching is kingdom governance they administrate the distribution of the realities of the spirit committed to that dispensation and they supervise its safe delivery any true apostle of God that you know is a hard person the word of God is like fire and it has nothing to do with temperament the grace will alter you to make sure you deliver at that pace even if you are a quiet person They're coming from afar. They're coming from afar. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. If our parents understood this structure many of them will never be where they are now they are sincere people but they are victims of the disorganization of the church so they had nobody to learn and nobody to challenge who was lying to them are we together the church structure was so designed so that anybody can teach anything and claim his 20 years in ministry when it comes to these matters is by the spirit no it's by the spirit you don't say I'm 120 years old and you are teaching nonsense and misleading God's people. Brothers and sisters, the spiritual protocol has been observed for your progress in the spirit. I want you to know this and take advantage of it. We are not in error as to the strategies that will build you. If you don't build this a lapse on your own path. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord so revival oh may this place remain a place if you know people who are weary and out you can just drag them somebody tells you me now i've done everything you can think about and you are trying to talk to the person and you just tell the person come. i know a place where the river flows from zion and i will just come and keep you in that atmosphere the person may even come late just like many people outside here and while they listen something is happening it's more than the words we speak there is a spirit communication if it were words believe me you will be tired by now there is a difference between newness and freshness will you open up the gates open up the door Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Mandala Kaparados. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Sing it from your heart to your maker. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the door. In your name, we will rise. I don't lie. You reign on my. Adonai, Adonai, yeah. Adonai, yeah. you ready not. Sing in your name, in your name. Malaka parakos katabrande gadebash. We will rise. 
Era na na Maria moço na na Mariana. Sing Adona, 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 Adona. Just the voices. Adona, Adona. Men de kalabasu to putia. Our territory will not fail. We will not misrepresent the kingdom. You reign on I. Sing Adonai. Adonai. Please sit down if you can. Be sensitive to what God is doing tonight. Adonai, you reign on Adonai. Adonai. The last thing to expect every time you come for koinonia is a demonstration of the power of God. It's a doom to any territory where there are no instruments that can bring the supernatural to a people. It's a doom to any territory when the sick and the helpless cannot have an alternative. There must be a spiritual center that represents the might of God in a city. There must be a place where men can know that these demons disturbing my life can go. We are unapologetic about stamping the gates of hell within our territory. In the time of John G. Lake, Spokane was said to be the cleanest city. Hallelujah. E.W. Kenyon so many people have received this message without carrying his mantle a truck hit somebody in his church pieces the leg he stood in front of it and the leg started shaking and every bone joined back it was not a strange miracle that was the miracle of ushers we have lost so much we are not aware we don't know our spiritual heritage Pastors don't research. They just get up and preach nonsense. Nonsense! And everybody claims he's doing something. I don't say this in a cynical way. My heart is pain because there are souls that are lean and hungry. Nothing current in what the Spirit is doing. We celebrate these things and we justify growth because we can afford to buy suit and we have a nice car to prove that it is working. Is that how much we love the body? We have lost touch with our spiritual heritage. We don't know what happened before we came. And we have the audacity to believe that we are custodians of the mysteries of God. A custodian of a mystery is also a historian. One who meticulously studies the dealings of God. How did God move in the 50s? How did God move in the 60s? How did God move in the 80s? When revivals died, what happened? Have you not read of prophets in the Bible who spent their life searching prophecy? They were just searching the connecting prophecy. And when it was time for them to die, they left the curriculum for whoever would take up. Ministry is full time. Full time. Your entire life is spent guiding the people of God. Ministry is not a vocation. Where you try to get a job and it doesn't work and you say well so that i don't feel like i've wasted my life i just step into the vineyard that's the motivation a lot of people have so they are there and they are thinking that when i start buying a nice shoe and i can afford suit or something or i have a crowd brothers and sisters it's more than that it's more than that it's more than that this place is a place of healing 
a place of miracles my goodness the number of text messages i get from people and families that are oppressed is scary and overwhelming overwhelming when banks close for public holiday it affects a territory if they close by thursday people cannot wait for monday monday morning everybody is standing and arguing with their atm no matter how much they have in their account because they they miss the bank for three days i'm teaching tonight on the spirit of revival the spirit of true revival night on night you reign on night revelation chapter 3 in your name we will rise i don't know you reign on night casting crowns lifting hands Bowing hearts is what I've come to do. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts is what we've come to do. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus, Jesus, I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus, Jesus. See, let me tell you something. By the time Koinonia moves to our next level of life, where we have an auditorium, it services will run every day. Something must be happening spiritually. I, I don't believe in all this coldness. Then one day people just come around and scramble two hours, snoring their destiny and come out and believe they will take... No, 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 no. Go and ask a habalist if he goes on vacation. Ask him if he goes on holiday. We must make the body of Christ an institution. These are the principles of strategic kingdom advancement. When you are tired, that's when somebody is... When you are, you are charged, that's when somebody else is tired. There will always be people. Oh, I look forward to those times. Center for kingdom activities. There's a message playing. There's worship playing. There is a place to flog it out. Activities of angels. That's what will happen. Listen, listen. We are not a social welfare group. We are, not, we are not contributing to helping government. No. We are not helping any government. We are enforcing something. That this thing they are doing is nonsense. We are not a part of it. We are loyal citizens, but this is not our ideology. So I'm not, I'm not in partnership with any government doing anything. We are not social welfare. We are bringing the kingdom and its reality into a tent. There are, there are few territories where you go that you, I mean, there should be these kinds of places, these kinds of places all around that you can step in somewhere, right? And just pray and see somebody praying with you. A Christian library, books about generals, where you go and sit down and study. There are DVDs playing, archives, not conferences places to build not branches centers that educate people on what god is doing when we lose touch with history we will die a natural death i'm telling you this hallelujah yeah. your rent has expired nobody is helping you you just know that there is a place where you find comfort you go and see people like you crying to god you are crying 10,000. Somebody saying 1 million. Say, oh Lord, I find comfort in you. A city of refuge. Do you know why many believers compromise? There is no kingdom community. 
that community life of the kingdom is not there there is no place they can retreat to when they have been wounded and beaten by darkness when their faith is stretched there is hardly a place where they can go and find refuge and you try to create those places and see the gate of hell rise they will allow you to do any conference you want but make up your mind to create a physical portal for people all hell will fight it and those people will usually be Christians we owe our generation a debt to preserve the heritage of spiritual things there has to be somebody in ancient times they usually are these elders and when Israel starts messing up Moses and all the people will say okay let me remind you because then some of you were not born how by a mighty outstretched arm he brought us out of Egypt right he did this and that and the people are listening and at the end of it the people say ah we repent we will serve the Lord Satan's plot is to destroy people like us so that there, there, there is there are no more there will no longer be voices that can connect people and everybody will start doing anything he wants to do called church we must re-examine this thing we have been doing called church because it's not producing the required result i'm telling you oh, may it please the lord to feature us again and again in the moves that he's doing and give us an opportunity to create space for him because he's pressing to find expression when when Anna was mocked by Penina where did she run to was it closed she knew where to run to right now let me tell you where we run to every other place is closed only the herbal home the man says I'm, I'm here any day anytime just come with your goat and you see a Christian dragging a he goat to a, a herbal home and we have the mouth to criticize them we have the mouth to call everybody fake there are pastors who call everybody aside from them fake right ask them what contribution they are bringing in building the body let me tell you if i'm sick if i were not born again and i'm sick and dying i will go to any herbalist i don't care anybody that is talking to me i hear what i'm saying i will not do it in the secret i will do it openly how many people have died in the church who should not die because they will not come and be healed and be delivered because of loyalty to an ideology that somebody told them there are people who are sick today they are dying some of them will come and ring my phone and disturb me to come and meet me in the night they will criticize me in the day and call in the night you reign you ancient zion's king Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on earth. Oh, sing, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on earth. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your You are mighty on your Mighty on your Mighty on your Mighty on your You are mighty in this place Mighty on your Mighty on your throne Mighty on your Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your God must find a place in this city and in this region that can host the full dimension of what he seeks to do. We must pay the price of alignment in the spirit 
for God to find the people. Listen, don't let anybody make you look like a fool for being serious with God. What are you doing? I'm a pastor. No, no, no. What are you doing for a living? Look at that stupid statement. As though being a man of God is a call to, they just look at you as if you, you have your whole life has wasted. Shame on our degree of backsliding. Believe me, I have come with a mantle of revival tonight. My heart pains me when I see this thing. As I travel around regions, I know that men of God are doing their best. But I'm telling you, there's got to be true apostolic voices. It's not a title. It's not a name. It's an election of grace. When will the sick know that they can find a place of refuge? There are people who have come right now. Do you think it's my joy when I see people queuing up, standing? Some wanting to be healed, wanting to be blessed. I can hardly attend to one tenth of people. It is never my intention to be a superstar. The problem is there is a price. It's not a gift. We have been deceived that it's a gift. Let me tell you. I may not boast of knowing so much principles about finances. I may not boast of knowing so much intellectually. But brothers and sisters, when it comes to the presence of God and the mysteries of the kingdom, it's an office. It's not a, it's not a title. It's an office. Paul says, how that by revelation it was revealed to me. This mystery. This mystery. It will usually take us a long time to realize the kinds of vessels and the graces that God puts before us. Spirit of revival. There's too much backsliding in the body of Christ. We don't even know where the reference is again. No reference. Anybody comes up with his idea of what he calls spiritual growth. No reference. You pray a little, people are looking, they are feeling offended for your prayer life because they are hoping you backslide so that it will, it will, it will make them comfortable. Your, your fire is frustrating them because they don't want to grow. And seeing you increase is frustrating them recycling of revelations in the body of Christ because men cannot stay in the secret to pray the price and bring something fresh things are happening over territories we pastors are moving around with deaf ears no seeing eyes no hearing ear please we are going to pray just for one minute before I continue are we together you are going to say Lord revive my life revive my life please pray inside and outside pray revive my life this can't be it God is so much bigger than this this can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. This can't be it. Oh, don't deceive yourself. You know what the standard is in the spirit. You are bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. He's calling us deeper. He's calling us deeper, deeper, deeper.
Please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. A revival is a season of reawakening. A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy. A reawakening. A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy in the life of a people and a territory. A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy, spiritual inertia, inactivity in the life of a people and a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a season of reawakening in the life of individuals and corporately across a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a true revival is a situation where there is an outpouring of the spirit first in the life of individuals and then corporately across a territory and it brings a reawakening an awareness i'm going to be very fast because i want us to pray how do i know that a territory please help me how do i know that a territory is under the influence of a revival thank you there are certain parameters. Number one, the first sign that a territory is under a revival is restoration of love and passion for God. Corporately, not just individually, there is a restoration of God consciousness in that territory. When there is a territory where there are people who drink anyhow, smoke anyhow, live anyhow do anything they want to do when they want to do it it may not be their fault but the spiritual envoys in that territory are to be blamed increase god consciousness there have been times through history when the anointing of the spirit will fall on individuals and a territory even those who are not born again will be forced to have that consciousness of god When they look at you today and they say, where is your phone? Imagine someone who you ask him, um, what's your number? And he said, number? That's strange, right? You look at the person, have you been existing in that, this our generation? Imagine a pastor comes to preach and he carries a big um, flat screen size computer and then comes to drop it. You know something is wrong right because there's a better technology than that that's what happens in a revival people are forced to talk about the move of god the newspapers are forced to carry something do you know that in the days of the generals right the newspapers hardly discussed politics it was in a critical way but they were always talking now we are so idle the newspapers know if they write about us they will not sell so they rather talk about somebody who imported chicken from somewhere and they caught him because people will buy it the moment they say a man of god moves in their not there are all these stupid people they have come again look at how much of a nuisance we have become to society they are irritated when they see our faces upon papers in the times of Evan Roberts, people would lay hands on the magazine. Just lay hands on the newspaper and the spirit of revival will take. People will start falling under the anointing, repenting by themselves, having visions of Jesus. Restoration of love and passion for God. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. 
Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. Listen, let me tell you how the spirit of the Antichrist works in a territory. The first thing that happens is Satan usually uses the last revival to stop the next one. Are you seeing that now? So, the man of God who God did business with in the last revival, usually what happens is that because of what is happening, there is what we call premature satisfaction. Little result. Oh, Apostle Joshua Selman, you are the talk of the town. The, Satan takes advantage of that because he knows we like it we like names we like titles we like accolades oh here comes the man of god the one who raises the dead and and, and heals the sick and we we pride ourselves to our detriment we love honor there is an obsession about it we can do anything for it including backsliding so what happens is that people keep watching the devil keeps watching this thing your prayerlessness starts increasing your wordlessness starts increasing but he will never strike he will allow you and then he will throw all kinds of persecutions get my teaching why revivals die you know all those kinds of things together when that person is watered down god no longer has a voice listen there is a difference between God speaking to you in your secret place and God speaking to a territory. God has his mouthpieces everywhere. And then compromises begin to come in. What you would have talked about, you no longer talk about. Let me tell you how Satan destroys great men. He makes us victims of our messages. If Satan knows that God has anointed me to liberate people in an area, he will do everything within his power to make me a victim of those areas. The reason is because when that happens, you no longer will have the confidence to preach with might. Are you seeing why you need discipline? Love for God. Love for God. Your passion, your obsession about God. When you love God, there are indices. There must be a restoration of that love. Some of you sitting down looking at me, you know how you were with God. Tell yourself the truth. Ah, don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out light the fire again you see if you love god because of husband the day the husband comes there's no more pursuit to love god you see why we look you know i teach you a balanced teaching here when you tie your love for god to things as a bride you are in for a shock i can love god because of anointing i hope you know that and that anointing can lead me to go and fast because i want power the day the power comes and I can have one or two results, I now know that the anointing has come. Are we together now? So no matter what I, you don't know my secret place. Is it not when I come out here, it's only God that knows whether I'm serious over what I'm saying or not. You cannot ordinarily tell whether a man of God is serious with God or not. Because you see, God is so merciful. He will always confirm his word in the midst of the people. And it's usually it's a justification to men of God to mean they are intact. Be careful. That God is still using you and the power of God is still flowing does not mean that he's accrediting everything you are doing. You must go back to the secret place for editing and fine-tuning. Love for God. I am shocked to see how fast people lose their love for God. Lord, if you do this for me, I will come and testify. And then the other part of the story, we don't say it out, but it's in our heart. If you don't do it, I will hate you. So it doesn't seem to happen. Oh God, no husband again. Am I the worst sinner on earth? And, and you hear all those kinds of statements. How can you tie your love for God for these kinds of things? 
success can distract men please hear this there are many teachings on success that i'll bring this year but let me tell you success can distract more than failure in fact failure gives you focus because your ego is already strong but success can distract whenever you begin to see your candle rise brothers and sisters that's when to catch god that's not when to leave him and say everybody behold the celebrity you will die like a chicken when satan wants to throw you he allows you to rise high enough for everybody to see you he throws you in a way that threatens everybody so they don't try to rise like you again because the memory of your fall stops them from pressing it are you getting what i'm saying that's why certain people will not be serious with god and the devil will not touch them until they rise high before everybody and then something will happen and crash them down love for god this night we are addressing our love for god lovest thou me more than this one of the first indices of a true revival we can look at zaria as a city and samaru as a region and know whether the spirit of revival is in this city we can look at abu as a campus and know whether our love for god has diminished when somebody let me not go ahead of myself number two marks characteristics of a true revival number two the outpouring of the true spirit of holiness over a territory an outpouring brothers and sisters may god never make our territories without men who can speak the truth are you hearing what i'm saying the devil is out to frustrate men of god and water down people who can speak the truth please let me tell you something brothers and sisters if you are a christian many things must change in your life your lifestyle must change your conversation must change not by the energy of the flesh there is an alignment your job is to do that alignment if you do it well the transformation must happen there's too much nonsense and carelessness in the body of christ to a point that somebody will have to say i'm a christian for it oh you're a christian so you're a brother in the faith that's a serious issue are we here uh, you you see a christian sit somewhere and he's talking my goodness you are embarrassed until you start talking about koinonia for instance and say ah koinonia you know apostle ah, you don't need to see me say you mean you are there in antioch it was unbelievers who called people who were a reproduction of christ they call them christians who is calling you a christian can those who hate you say i hate this person no but i know he's a christian you can't be drinking and smoking and say it's just my body that is drinking my spirit is okay you are not all right please let's let's end this you are not all right let me tell you the truth no you are not all right you are watching porn see you see let me tell you something i'm not condemning you don't get me wrong the difference between a christian and an unbeliever is the presence of the convicting power of the spirit when when you are sinning unconvicted you are not in christ are you getting what i'm saying now yeah if by the work of the flesh somebody falls into a habit you went to your friends they reminded you of Gulda that you used to take you don't know what happened you gave into the flesh that conviction is a sign that you are in Christ that you can return and the Bible says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves it says and the truth is not in us he said but if we confess our sins not assume they are not there if we confess our sins not assume they are not there he says God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness have you turned that out of your bible because it's supposed to be there the true spirit of holiness please i speak especially to the young people all of us who are young people in this region let's not make it look like being a young person is a stupid thing are we together some people were discussing me somewhere and uh, i got to hear of course one of the ladies said, ah, this person you mean there are all these beautiful girls in koinonia how is he doing let me tell you how i'm doing i'm very fine very fine 
very fine healthy in the spirit very fine I intend to continue with God for a long time I decided that from the start of the journey we are afraid of the responsibility that firm decision brings because we know it will have to force us we still want to enjoy some things you see that because if you make a firm decision you too you know you know a firm decision means deleting that person's phone number but you don't want to so you are not serious that's the meaning it's as simple as that because you live jesus i live i have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you live jesus i live today i live to pray a true spirit of revival that you can see somebody kept his money and leave it there when the old man wants to touch it he reminds you that it has been nailed to the cross and you mind your business and leave that money there even though you needed money to eat the spirit of holiness let me tell you if we allow the spirit of holiness to leave our territory we will never experience the fullness of god we will not see miracles and signs and wonders please let's not mock god i know what i'm saying is hard but you too you know i'm not lying you know i'm not lying don't let the spirit of holiness just run out of your life and the key to unholiness is carelessness Ross, you there? There's one party we're having. Say, yeah, but I don't drink again. They just come, Jerry. Carelessness. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. You take advantage of the grace of God and produce a life that is worthy. Please don't feel condemned. I speak to all of us here, those who are here and those who are following us. The goal is not to condemn you, but the goal is to create conviction by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holiness and power go hand in hand. Don't ever deceive yourself that you can compromise on holiness and experience the power of God. You can kneel down with offering and lift it to a man of God. There has to be true holiness. There has to be true holiness. I'd like you to lay hands on your head in one minute and pray and say, Lord, restore to my life the spirit of holiness. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Especially if you know you are affected by what I'm saying, please pray. This is a threshing floor. It's a family. Please lay your hands and say, Lord, I've been pretending as if this is not an issue. But tonight, you have brought your word out of love. Not to condemn me but to remind me that you are still waiting i receive a baptism of the spirit of holiness those outside please make sure you are laying your hand oh i separate myself by grace from the works of the flesh the impulses of the flesh the appetites of the flesh the appetite the lust and the carnality that destroy great men lord i'm going far the spirit of holiness must come upon my life it must come upon my life i receive a restoration lord i used to have it but something happened i gave in to women i gave in to men i gave in to drinking i gave in to wrong relationships i was lonely and i allowed i i frustrated the manifestation but tonight oh god in this place i receive grace 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 is not by the strength of the flesh you can't resist evil by the strength of the flesh remember the cross the place where grace comes from your old man has been nailed therefore mortify your body take advantage of that grace let it become an instrument of righteousness please pray it's a year of multiplied grace and influence God is not a native doctor. Godliness. True holiness. 
That's why many of our fathers have lost touch with spiritual reality. Help us, oh God. That in lifestyle, in character, in conversation, that everything about your life, there is a presence of holiness you will carry on your job, in school, in your atmosphere, not by condemning others, not by reading people off. That's the flesh. You won't glorify God that way. But that you carry a compelling presence. Hallelujah. Before we continue, pray again. Say, Lord, I overcome carelessness in my life. Some of us are already at the verge. God is bringing this as a prophetic message. Because some of us are already dwindling. Visiting the guy carelessly. Doing all kinds of things carelessly. You are a Christian. God is bringing this message to salvage you. Get back to order. Get back to order. Get back to order. Get back to order. The true spirit of holiness. No. You can't start accepting bribe. Not at this level of your life. You used to hate it before. Don't all of a sudden love bribe. You are a Christian and a Christian indeed. The spirit of God in you and the righteousness of God compels you to hate immorality. Not out of fear, but because of your love for God and your desire to be used by him. Make sure it doesn't leave. That's a fire you must not allow to die. Aside from immorality and the rest, what of vain glory? What of self-seeking? What of vanity, ambitions that are not consistent with Christ? Please pray. This is a threshing floor tonight. Those of us outside, make sure you are praying. If nobody has told you there is a problem with your life, I'm telling you there is. If you are giving room to the flesh, I don't care what excuse you bring. God does not condemn, but he does not condone evil. Many of us have been praying, Lord, I want you to use me. I want to see your power. I'm showing you the secret. It overrides fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third sign to know that there is a true revival in a place. The third sign is massive salvation of souls. Genuine salvation. Genuine salvation. Genuine salvation. It's not enough for people to come and be saved. They must be saved well. Well to stay well and grow massive salvation that is engineered by those who are custodians of that revival listen if there is no true passion for souls in your heart something is wrong let me prove to you that it's unnatural how many of you have seen a scene where there is an accident nobody asks who is a christian there or who is a muslim everybody rushes because they want to save them from dying Every time you see sinners, I want you to imagine an accident scene. Imagine a fatal accident. What would you do? There are some of us, we have roommates, we have people in our workplaces. It's until maybe three months to leave Zaria that they stumble across Koinonia and they come and find you there. And you see them crying and say, this is what you have been enjoying. Say, I'm too fine. How can I tell this guy to how can I lead him to Christ? Massive salvation. By the way, the Lord, while I was preparing this, the Lord gave me an instruction. I'll say during the announcement, but then let me say it again. By God's grace, next Friday's miracle service, you are coming with two sets of requests. The first is 
the names of your family members and loved ones those who you have tried to get them born again come and watch god will do for them this year you will watch what god will do he will surprise you are, are we are, please you are permitted to write a full scrap sheet of names if you have it write it down write no matter i don't care who they are don't you let the devil tell you god cannot save any man if he saved you he can save any man even pharaoh although he didn't repent but he acknowledged that there was god ne ne nebuchadnezzar acknowledged god turned him into an animal leave the how to god god knows where to touch them and force them to come to christ when saul landed on the floor he knew that this was god see god knows where to touch the arrogance of any man are we together so you're going to bring one prayer request your normal prayer request and that of your loved ones but please write it down not names of enemies and that's not what i'm asking you names of sinners sinners people who you know you are agreeing with god let me tell you one key to seeing the hand of god on your life be passionate about where his heart is are we together if i'm a millionaire and you want to get my attention won't you look for what interests me and also be passionate because that will be the meeting point are we together we want to call god's attention but we are not facing where his heart is facing it's not enough to pray and fast you must be serious about sinners there are some of us when we make altar calls here you now look at time and say God, let's hurry up to you it's not a big deal you've forgotten that he saved you you've forgotten that that person he's saving now may be the first in a family of 10 to be born again i remember one of our ladies who years ago they were all unbelievers you know non-christians now i mean and god i mean saved her she became saved i think while on campus and we kept praying like this in the initial days when we used to start our meetings god touched her brother i think god touched her mother three of them were all saved remaining the father the father was a hardened he wasn't somebody who was near the kingdom we told her keep praying don't say god will not touch them keep praying one day she received a call he was saved in living faith when he was saved i was told reliably that they took money at the back of the boot of a car is i don't know it's like his family members they drove down and say which depression are you in that would have made you to become a christian ah you will see salvations that will scare you the day you go and look at somebody in your family you will think it's a mistake you just hear, you say what are you doing say i'm praying in tongues say are you joking say I, i'm a sanctuary keeper I'm, I'm, I've, I've left the world since. I used to have a bad colleague years ago. One time, I heard that he was a pastor in Salem ministry. I said, it's a lie. The one day he called me and we we're talking. We just spoke and he said, I said, tell me it's a joke. Tell me it's a joke. These guys were the fence jumpers. These guys were the ones they carry in the gutter in the morning. And now he has been changed. Please don't conclude on any man. Don't conclude on any man. That roommate you are seeing, you know every Friday she's not around till Monday morning. Wait and see what God does with her. The reason why we don't evangelize is because we don't believe God can touch people. There's nobody on earth today that God cannot save. There is hope for the living. There is hope for the living. Is God helping us? Please, we are going to see massive salvation. Make sure you don't allow people without. You can give them koinonia messages. You can pray for them. If you don't have the courage, drag them and bring them to koinonia. Just like many people, as I'm talking now, there are many people who will respond to the altar call right now. They came because they were invited. When you love souls, you can pay for them to come. If 50 naira is too much for you to pay transport for someone to come and get born again, don't say you love God. Don't say you love God. When a guy loves a lady, he can have 5,000 in his account. He will withdraw it, leave the minimum balance, and tell her eat. She say, I don't want to stress your body. They say, no, 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 don't eat. It's me that is paying for this thing. But when it comes to souls, we are afraid. Well, someone is telling you, Kai, I, I would love God, but he's giving flimsy excuses. Why don't you tell the person, two of us, let's climb bike and come. Are you that passionate and unembarrassed? 
do that and see the way God wipes your tears. See, these are kingdom keys. There are no shortcuts to this thing. Souls. When I pray many times, I say, oh God, use koinonia as a platform to save sinners you see my heart when we make altar calls and people are coming i tell you give them chance to come i remember somebody uh, I, I i don't know exactly i think he was he's, he's an imam or something one of these these uh, very strong guys he was seated outside when i was teaching the reality of heaven and hell this was somebody who is learned you understand what i'm saying and he sat down outside and was thinking and while I was teaching, he saw a vision of Jesus outside. And he got born again. The day he came for counseling, I could not believe it. Ushers, I think one or two people. There's one of our brothers in Ushers too who was like that. Now totally transformed, serving the Lord, working in the ocean department. Who told you God cannot save them? Your stubborn father, your stubborn mother, your missing brother who comes back once in three months i'm telling you when the power of god lands on them we don't know the power that raised christ from the dead that's why because all we are teaching about in church is money we don't know the power if a power can raise a dead body is it to transform one who is alive that it will not change him? number four let's run the fourth mark or characteristic of a true revival is passion for the house of God now please hear me I say this sincerely from the depth of my heart and I, I mean no condemnation with this but when as men of God we celebrate small ministries and small churches to mean no I'm like that me God gave me this I don't believe in that concept I know that crowd is not the ultimate determinant as to whether God is there but brothers and sisters people must be saved and they must have passion for the house of god because that's when they are taught the precepts of the kingdom the church is god's portal to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom it's not enough for people to be born again that's why we co we collect their details we send them text messages and follow them up what's wrong with getting people born again and get their numbers once in a while you send them a scripture maybe the person is about to go back to alcohol and ah, the text comes and you say maybe it's a scripture love not the world looks at your phone looks at that bottle and he knows and the spirit of god you have given him access to kick in and he drops it never to pick it again there's no support structure in the body of christ to help sinners stand once they are born again we say okay now just find your way back to your seat and the lord help you that's why when people get born again we recommend to them because the ministry is still growing we don't have all the avenues to do all the things we want to do right we recommend them to go to the prayer department at least for one month even if they don't intend to be members just to join that's the only other large platform we have to minister to the people that's why pray for us pray for this ministry that god will take us to the next level fast and you will see the things that are in store for the body of christ passion for the house of god when coming to the house of god hear me let me use koinonia this is our platform when coming to koinonia suddenly becomes an endurance please i want you to know that something is already wrong with your spiritual life are we together now yeah you just sit down and say kai this thing self to six I will even sit down outside. It's like it's cold, Abi. Those things are indices. It's a reaction to something already happening in your spirit. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. The, the scripture, the anchor scripture that the Lord gave us. Remember the scripture. It says, The mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted, and all nations shall flow. They will say to themselves, Come, let us go to the house of the Lord, to the mount of God. For there he will teach us his ways. He said, for out of Zion shall proceed the Lord. Passion. Passion. There are people, you see them January, Koinonia, and then later on, maybe when result is out or something, it just coincides with a miracle service. They now drag themselves and come and sit outside. And of all the prophecies that are coming, they are just waiting for when they talk about academics. 
the moment they say for your academics they now they are now invited immediately they finish they run that game you are playing with god you will not win praise the lord i love you jesus i worship and adore you just want to tell you that i love you more than anything any ministry that is truly committed in soul winning will not be small what we are doing in the church is sheep stealing what did i call it sheep stealing when you steal a sheep a sheep is not a fool it grew somewhere eventually ah you see i am the good shepherd my sheep here know my voice and we, we steal sheep we are we are trying to steal choices quality sheep. so if sam please stand up sam if sam is a millionaire i want that kind of sheep around because i know the relevance of the sheep to that pasture or that place that attitude every time we see unbelievers you see somebody with his draggy jeans you know this guy you even need to support him back we don't like those kind of souls the person calls you daddy say who is your i'm not your father i don't know you i just got you born again please look for somebody else these are the kinds of, ah, this is my son you are, i'm well pleased that carnal attitude are you getting what i'm saying so when if that's why i say it to the glory of god and you know here I know no man after the flesh i will not go to anybody's house and say um you are a senator uh, your daughter is a member in our ministry we, we have we, we want to buy boss god will use people there is nobody that i will reject on grounds of anything whether your father is a carpenter or a pilot it doesn't matter hallelujah we don't love the sheep and they know they know when, they know the type of sheep we love when you see a beautiful lady say you are you are my daughter daughter how are you and you keep stressing that lady even when she leaves your ministry she's wondering what do you like me or the beauty see members are not idiots they know pastors who are serious they know they know pastors who are playing games you just gather phone numbers of very pretty ladies these are this is what we do that destroy us are we together now or we gather the number of people who are rich and all of that and oh no, there is a place for honor don't get me wrong what i'm saying this thing we are doing is too much it's sheep stealing how many of us are willing to labor on sinners until they become true saints the Bible says the kingdom of God is like a, a, remember the story of a shepherd, right? 99 sheep. One got missing. What did he do to the 99? They were all right. So he left them and went, still not minding if he loses the 99, went to look for that one. Is that our attitude? When somebody comes to stand, you are looking whether he's holding an envelope. If it's not, you look at his shoe, look at his watch and say, let's pray. Father, help this person and you are praying. Don't waste my time here. But when somebody comes package you are like what are they what let me let me know the needs if you're a pastor here please do this thing truly god is going to judge us not in a condemning way we are going to be accountable for this act as if there is an authority above you members know let me tell you there is no member who will see a man of god talking like i'm talking who will not love him and be open to him do you know why many of our members in different churches i'm speaking apostolically there are many people listening do you know why many members they know their pastors don't like them they know it they can't truly call this person my pastor my father somebody i can come and talk to because they know that the pastors want money they want what will make them proud by god's grace we don't destroy our wounded soldiers here no matter what you have done we enter the hole with you and come out together a good shepherd doesn't stand on his sheep and leaves a trophy. He lays down his life for his sheep. Passion for the house of God. Number five. Quickly. Passion for the word. Indices that measure a revival in a place. Passion for the word. Passion for prayer. 
passion for a life of worship. You can know whether a territory is under the influence of the spirit of revival by how much people hunger for the word. Jordan Bookstore is there. He will tell you. I know that people love the word in this place. I'm even careful to announce certain books because you announce it by tomorrow. There are people who are already there getting books, studying, buying concordance. Truly, let me tell you, I'm shocked at people's low level of passion for the word of God. When I started out with God, sometimes you will come and see different kinds of Bibles. Our money was spent buying Bible, not just to look for Rema. We didn't have the privilege to learn Greek and Hebrew, so you listen. We buy Bible on tape, bombard it, put it in your ears. I had one rechargeable then. All kinds of songs. All kinds of songs. In the night, you play it. But right now, what do we do with our money? We don't do anything for the kingdom. You buy one small Bible that looks like a phone. You just carry You cannot even see what is there. You don't care because you don't read it. You don't read it. Obviously, you don't read it. Please, let's take this thing of God seriously. When do you close yourself and study? Not just devotional, where you read fast. As you are praying, you are on your way going. Oh, I see this, uh, God. And then scripture for reading, Luke chapter this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen. You just drop it and run. Ask the person what he is running towards. He will tell you he is looking for money or a meaningful life. And we have left the word of life. I found your word and I did eat them. And they were a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. passion for the world passion for worship many of us don't worship we pray and we study the world there is a place for worship in your spiritual growth if you don't have worship tapes now technology has made it easy put these things i have a selection in my phone i call them deep worship there's one called encounter that one when when i'm high in the spirit i just switch not all songs minister to me at the same level I have studied what the anointing does and the songs that help them. Has it happened to you like that? Yeah. You put the songs. Don't just say Christian songs and then uh, uh, motivational songs. No, no, no. Separate this thing and take God seriously. You have a selection. The moment you just hear a Christian one, there is another one diluting your spirit and then midway, after you enjoy it more, just to satisfy the guilt, you now quickly run to Don Muen. Don't, please, saints of God, I admonish you in the name of Jesus Christ. Guard your heart with all diligence. Your destiny depends on it. You will never find one on Christian song in my field. I'm not one of those people who say, look, we need to work with technology. I'm not a fool. Technology has failed us. Many things, governments have failed us. It's obvious they are ignorant. We used to say it before, but there was no room to expose it right now. It's clear. That the government of nations are clueless. Come to the kingdom and learn the ways of God. The years to come will show the excellency of the wisdom of the spirit. We are like the virgins that are taking extra oil now. A time will come when those who had that oil, they will not have anything again. Satan does not give anything free. Have you not learned? A day will come. The day he meets all the people celebrating him, they will pay with their life. Satan never gives you a thing free. He will give you, you will think he's dash, but his business. He will come in the future for everything. Anybody that serves the devil knows that it's a fraternity unto death. The end is death. Create an atmosphere of worship. Create an atmosphere of the world. Get Bible. I have, I have a, a very beautiful software that I got. Just the words of Jesus. They just pick them through the Gospels. Just everywhere Jesus spoke, just the words of Jesus. Oh, it's beautiful. With worship playing in the background like this. I tell you, you will wash your spirit. You know how you, when you listen, you will know you are getting clean through the word. The word cleanses. Cleanses your mind. Sometimes I sleep and let it keep playing. And I have visions and encounters. You wake up shaking under the presence of God. You create an atmosphere that cannot be denied. This is how it happens. What if I have roommates that are not serious? That's why you have a phone. 
you cried to God for a good phone he gave it to you use it well use it well not just for sending text messages use it well how much does it take to download I mean there are Android devices with one two thousand naira. don't say I cannot afford it your hair your shoulder your knees your toes look at all you have used your money that God gave you for building your spirit to just build your body alone remember your spirit is better than your body invest in it first number let's hurry up we're almost done when there is a true revival in a place there is an outburst of financial miracles and sociological advancement listen revival affects the quality of the living of the people with India don't think when you subscribe to the things of God and a revival comes um, it means that other areas of your life will suffer no when there is a real revival the quality of the life of God's people is improved almost every major technological advancement is connected to a revival it's just that the historians remove the God factor out and make it look like somebody just discovered something a lot of the people who made strange discoveries they did them coinciding with periods of revival and most of those people were either christians or came from christian families when the spirit of revival is upon you you will be rich you will be blessed because the presence of god will compel favor upon your life when a ministry is under that kind of open heavens they will enjoy supplies people will do well people will get jobs there will be marriages there will be blessings there will be children there will be all kinds of breakthroughs don't make it look as if when you seek god you'll be in trouble no seek ye first the kingdom of god matthew 6 33 tells us he said and his righteousness if you do that properly he says all other things shall be added to you as well amen seven when there is the true spirit of revival in a place there is an outburst of miracles, signs, and wonders. Oh, this is very important. There's going to be a great awakening. There's going to be a great revival in our land. There's going to be a great awakening. And everyone... Who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Miracles. I believe in miracles. Believe me. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in miracles. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe God can step into people's lives and change their stories. We've seen all kinds of testimonies in this place. That's what is going to happen to many of you this night. Koinonia remains a place of healing, a place of miracles. Because of people's inability to contend for the true healing power. They say, look, um, um, healing. When they say healing, they are quick. You say, no, 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 emotional healing. Please, physical healing. People are sick. Their bodies are sick. Are we together now? Yes, there's a place for emotional healing. But we usually say those things because there's no physical index to prove whether they are healed or not. If somebody is blind, and he's healed he's healed is that not true we must contend for grace even in this dimension say amen and may it happen through your hands there is a joy when god uses you there is a joy when god does things around you but when it happens through your hands it's a blessing i trust that god will use us to begin to lay hands on the sick and speak to people that they note you and say ah i i came to amaka and she prayed with me and doors just opened great testimony ella agreed with me she prophesied something over my life oh i met aaron crying on something and he spoke over my life some of us are so backward in the area of the miraculous even if somebody said you prayed with me and something happened say no because you came for koinonia you must believe god in your life hallelujah miracles signs and wonders any pastor in this day and age who is not serious about the miraculous should be prepared for empty pews i guarantee you any pastor who is not ready for the demonstration of the miraculous people are not looking if they are looking for where to watch film 
their silver bed there are many there's cinema and all kinds of places people don't come to church to watch movies they come to church because they have real problems is that not true they need the power of god head on in their lives lastly the final index that shows that an atmosphere is under the influence of revival is impartation of gifts graces and mantles impartations see revivals are times where god recruits people into his army most people stepped into the call of god upon their life at revivals when people are just praying non-stop for a while the holy ghost separate me paul and barnabas there has to be release of mantles graces impartations it happens during revivals there will be almost no impartations when the revival is not in a place remember a man in the bible called agabus he had daughters and all of them were prophets there are few people who have carried those kinds of mantles that can come from father to children God knows my children. God knows. Before they arrive, there will be a special recording waiting for them. As soon as they arrive, straight on. Before the nonsense that society brings. This and that. You are stupid. You are foolish. No. They will receive something. They will start having visions and encounters of Jesus. That's why I respect and I want us to appreciate them. I respect every parent in this place who come with their babies and their children. Let them sleep and sleep in the presence of God. It was in the presence of God Samuel was sleeping when he had the voice of God. Even if you must sleep, do it in the presence of God. Because although your body is sleeping, your spirit is receiving. Impartations of mantles and graces. That's what is happening to some of you. Some of you in the nearest future, God will send you to territories and you'll be the ones doing this thing I'm doing right now. When you stand one day you will just stop in the middle of the congregation and tears will come down and you will tell them once upon a time i sat down quietly i remember when i used to go for meetings and sit down and i hear the man of god say out of this place god will raise great men and people are shouting amen some are sleeping some are playing some are not serious and i just sit down there and i say really i could imagine the angels and all these people saying young man pay attention there are destinies tied to you very quickly what is the price what is the requirement for revival and we're going to pray I'll just give you four of them quickly and then we're done sorry I may not have time to read the scriptures is God blessing you tonight the first price requirement for true revival not assumed revival true revival is consecration the first price you want to host the glory of God the first requirement is consecration media help us with one scripture that I found very interesting Isaiah 52 verse 11 I'll, I'll just read the other ones while they pull up that one for us 2 Timothy 2 verse 19 to 21 says nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standeth sure it says having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his he says and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity iniquity is not just sin fornication and the rest no it's a state of your heart that produces those workings of the flesh let's read this scripture together one to read depart ye depart ye go ye out from thence touch no unclean thing it says go ye out from the midst of her be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Those that host precious things from God. He says, depart. Depart ye. Consecration. Consecration. Very, very important. Set apart for his service. Set apart. The Bible says, there is no man who warreth and tangles himself. We want to be civilians and soldiers at the same time. It doesn't happen. No. Consecration.
Consecration is understood when you look at monks and sisters in a convent. You know that, that dedication. They have decided that they are not going to get married for the purpose of their service to the kingdom. You must dedicate your whole life. Some of us have given God half of our lives. Some of us gave God everywhere, excluding your head and your thinking. Some of us gave God everything. No, no, no. You have to give him everything. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? For great is the measure of your royalty. O oh, morning star, you truly are. Number two, the second prize is hunger and thirst. You want to see revival in your life, there must be a hunger for it. Isaiah 44 verse 3 and Psalm 63 verse 1 and 2. I'm giving this to us very quickly because of time. He will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Him that is what? There must be a thirst. I will pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. Do you have that hunger? I'm telling you, I have an insatiable hunger to see revival in my life. I want to see the revival power of God in my life. That everywhere I go to regions to minister, I leave a deposit of the spirit of revival in that place. Hunger and thirst. Psalm 63 verse 1 and 2. He says, O oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. He say, my soul pants after you. Right? In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Do you have that hunger and thirst to see revival in your life? It was men like John Knox that prayed and said, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. We quote it and have no passion at all. Number three. The price for revival. Prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fasting. Prolonged seasons. You don't pray for one week and see revival. There are women who prayed for their children for 20 years non-stop before the fire of God fell on them. Prolonged seasons. That's why it's important to be consistent in your prayer life. And please, I talk to everybody here, inside and outside. If your prayer life has nose dived, we welcome you to join the prayer department on Tuesdays. Even if it is for one week, there is fire burning in that place, I tell you. Join and refire yourself. Prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fastings. Listen, fasting is a powerful spiritual principle. You don't do it out of religion or out of fear. However, it, it energizes your spirit and promotes you to have faith in God really unbelief is what it challenges so that the conviction about the reality of God is crystallized in your heart Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 it was while they were in the upper room praying that the Holy Ghost fell Acts 13 verse 2 it was while they worshipped and prayed and ministered unto the Lord with fasting the Bible spoke I mean God spoke to them and said separate unto me Paul and Barnabas Number four, the price for the word of God. Intense study of the word. With a view to living by it. Not just for head knowledge. Not like the people the Bible says, ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Intense study of the word of God. Finally, the last price for revival is the sacrifice of time. 
the sacrifice of time you want to see god's might in your life you must give him time i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting on you lord i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting on you you're not going to rush god and see his glory the proof of passion is the investment of time anything you love you have time for it please give god time remember i told us last week you must give god time don't give god one hour don't give god two hours there are times where you have to dedicate a whole day and just say lord this is for you a time of worship and prayer let his presence host you that day you are dedicating it just for watching movies that will build your life bible stories watching messages listening to teachings worship prayer you must even be fasting you can just focus this day is on to you imagine if someone walked up to you and said i'm dedicating my tomorrow for you no matter how antisocial you are even if you say no thank you you will be happy that somebody can sacrifice his day when you come to somebody and it tells you look i don't have time i'm busy sometimes you feel bad you feel that ah, this person doesn't value me so much that's what happens when we come to god and just rush him. god are you aware that i have problems okay i'm aware do something about them i'm on my way a woman called me one time she had this son whether he joined friends or so and went somewhere i don't know what he went to go and do this young boy and maybe about 10 or 11 started hearing voices physical voices like word of knowledge sometimes they can tell him kill yourself or pour hot water you know you you know that is of the devil when the instruction does not carry the life of god god will never ask you to pour hot water on your body how does it glorify jesus the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy and this boy continued to do all these kinds of things and i told her, i said mama thank god you brought this boy this boy would die for nothing one day hell is rearming itself to make sure there is an onslaught an assault against the body of christ and many times we're just crossing our legs listen i need you to know i've taught you about warfare we teach warfare correctly we are not people who fight from a standpoint of foolishness we are standing from a standpoint of victory but that establishment you must do it otherwise victory will not be automatic hebrews chapter 2 it says but we do not yet see all things under his feet please let me say this respectfully be careful who you listen to and be careful the content of the spiritual information you are given just because people are sincere may not mean their communications are balanced and accurate listen to what i'm telling you many people have become casualties of imbalanced spiritual communications jesus told us everywhere in his crusade demons came they were not afraid of Jesus' own crusade. Demons, they followed people. They didn't wait outside and enter later on. They came. Imagine Jesus in a crusade. Praise the Lord. The people shouted hallelujah. And the demons were still in them. And they did not go. When the word is not engaged, it does not have any power to do anything. A spirit can sit down. The same way some of you are sitting quietly now. As sincere and innocent as you are. In the next few minutes you'll be surprised what will be happening in your own life and then you will see doors that have been closed opening like this then you will know that these doors were not closed by mistake and will not be opened by mistake everything good comes to everybody except you the moment is your turn something terrible happens 
a gentleman just sees you and say beautiful lady can i go and see your parents and that's the end of it his business goes down his life goes down everything crashes until he leaves you then he goes back up do you believe what i'm teaching you So while it is true that it's the Holy Spirit that ultimately creates conviction, the manifestation of the miraculous in our lives and in the church. You know, when I came down, you need to see the multitudes of people outside. There are people sitting on the soccer way here. My brothers and my sisters, listen, you went to school. Do you think human beings are stupid? Do you think someone will transport himself from another nation or another state? Some of you have not eaten since you came. You came straight to sit down. Is God so wicked to sit down and allow you carry your trouble and go back? Oh, not coin on here. I welcome you to a place where God has given us the keys to deal with everything that is not of God. I saw so many people standing outside the overflow by the roadside and compassion just gripped my heart i said imagine if i were one of these people and they were happily standing they were not complaining they just knew that if i may but touch the hem of his garment my brothers and my sisters let me tell you forgive me if it sounds proud but god has given us something let me tell you sincerely we we make bold and we ask the world to come and receive because he has given us something i told you last week you only knock a door that you don't have the key when you have a key you don't you stop knocking you open that's the same way your destiny will be open the lord declared prophetically that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness so in a meeting like this if i were you my heart is stayed on that word listen let me tell you please listen you see me teaching passionately we are going to pray when i teach like this huh, i don't teach as a preacher i come with my heart full of a burden are you getting what i'm saying i come sincerely with my heart full of a burden because i love god but i love his people too my greatest satisfaction is not my personal progress is seeing the hand of god made manifest in your life When instructions are given, when these spiritual things are given, you must open your heart to believe them. You see, the, the gospel works with the simplicity of childlike faith. Sometimes many of us carry this trado African pride and that's what stops us from receiving. God wants to step in and touch you and you are wondering will God really touch me you know my peculiar problem you know the name are you the first to be in trouble God knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble let me tell you this I don't care what the situation is but I want us to agree that this God of heaven ah uh, the king of the universe that he will arise for you tonight you see let me tell you this my prayer this year when i was fasting and praying this year i prayed a prayer i said lord some people don't know what a testimony is give them one they only know how other people's testimonies the lord did this for this but they have never had a testimony themselves the day you have a real testimony yourself it will humble you you wouldn't know whether to stand or to kneel down that's what i'm praying for you for today a testimony testimony when the hand of god comes in a meeting and upon a man you see let me tell you this the supernatural is not just falling down and roll you can fall down and roll from left to right and stand up and go back and not testify the proof that god came is the testimony that follows the testimony the testimony of jesus the testimony of jesus apostle i came here barren march miracle service by april miracle service i'm one month pregnant that's a testimony listen come david down when the devil oppresses your life
destroys everything about you he uses men as a canvas to write a letter to god that your dominion and your royalty is still being contested with oppression is a letter sent through men to god the highest of god's creation the devil writes upon your life i will destroy the family and i will make sure everyone begs like you send a um, a chat send and then a miracle is god's reply that god writes through you and says in spite of this i am still on the throne it's true i believe in miracles i honestly and truthfully believe in miracles i believe in principles I believe in mysteries, but I believe in divine intervention. My brothers and my sisters, God can shorten a man's journey. What then is the excellency of his mercy? Listen, God is a God of process. I agree. Listen carefully. God is a God of principles. I agree. He will not excuse laziness and he will not excuse spiritual laxity. But let me tell you, when blind Bartimaeus said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me the mercy of god can shorten the journey of a man if you get born again at age 40 do you know how long it takes to know god genuinely know god you don't read your bible in two months and know god but there's something the spirit of god can do and give you a solid encounter that in six months you have caught up with the spiritual level of more than five years how about restoration your parents started building from 1999 till today it has stopped at Lintel level right there you went to school and said i'm going to pay it and finish everything the day you said you pay it you almost died i made a vow with my life that i would believe this word and i will engage it life is too risky to be careless with spiritual laws engage it don't wait until the devil kills your life and your children before you know many believers learn too late let me say this and thank god for his mercy you will receive but do you know there are some of you the lord spoke to you about coming here since last year you've been arguing and giving reasons and excuses your situation would not have been that bad but thank God because although Lazarus was three days dead, Jesus is still the resurrection and the life. Not only the healer. When I prayed, I told the Lord, I said, please Lord, give people a testimony. Real testimonies. I was blind. Now I see. God did something in three weeks to my finances. Everybody see what God can do. God transformed my family. God turned me around and did something for me. I don't doubt your love for God, but there must be proofs of that love. There must be proofs of that love. Somebody shout, Lord, give me an evidence. Say, Lord, give me an evidence. I believe in proofs. John chapter 4 and verse 48. I'll begin to pray shortly. Bless you. 4 verse 48. He says, And Jesus said unto him, Who was speaking here? Jesus. Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. How true. How true. That there are so many people in your family, until they see what the power of God does in your life they will never believe your God they think God is one of those things this is a charm this is this this is that and then God is one of them but the day like Dagon all those gods fall before the Almighty God and you return back with a solid evidence let me tell you that day like Pharaoh your loved ones will confess that this your God is God Are we together so i want you to be serious don't sit down and just look around and say ah who is going to receive let me clap for him no it's an insistence it's a desperation
except ye see miraculous signs you shall not believe luke chapter 5 we'll read the first 11 verses that miracles can help to create solid convictions charles and francis hunter powerful evangelists they've gone to be with the lord now they wrote a book that a miracle is worth a thousand words i believe them i believe them the world is tired of our noise and our stories they want to see a demonstration and a manifestation of the reality of the life and the power of god it says and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of god he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. next verse please and saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets uh-huh we're reading to 11 and he entered into one of the ships which was simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship next verse now when he had left speaking he said unto simon launch out into the deep and let your nets for a drought five what happened Simon answering said master we have toiled all night in other words he said lord look you are not the first to pray for me a man of god prayed for me in zaria another man prayed in wherever you know so god is one of those things you bless me oh yeah do it master we have toiled all night not for a few hours all night night vigil looking for a fish and did not catch even one it says nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net six and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their seven and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships miracles can create relationships that you get a miracle and partners that were minding their business you can say come and join me who will not follow someone with results who will not let me tell you the bible talks about a wealthy man and um, how did he put it now a poor man that we even with much entreaties they will run away from him there are many people that come from where we come from and will pass us as if they don't know us because you represent shame and anything that looks like Ichabod, the departure of the glory, men will usually find a way to excuse it from. Ah, but the Bible says you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah, a delight. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sing. Verse 8 when simon peter saw this look at this this is what miracles do he fell down at jesus's knees saying depart from me i'm a sinful man was a sermon preached a serious miracle happened and that miracle created conviction the same way some of you have been laughing at men of god sincerely and laughing at everything that has to do with the power of god and by the time we'll be sharing the grace tonight you will stand and go back quietly not talking to anybody and say i've seen today i heard with my ears like job but i've seen with my eyes that god is real and his power is real his grace is real nine for he was this is what led to the repentance he was so men can be astonished to repentance that they look at your life and say promise when did this happen when did god lift you was it not last year together we were discussing and you tell him there is a name god is called though, the lifter of men the lifter of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters run away from anybody who tell you results don't matter they do they do out of the abundance of the evidence of the workings of God in your life the nations will bow to your God they will never bow to you just because you are talking man of God hear me no results you have MP pews there's there's no way around it there must be an evidence a serious evidence when John questioned the messiahship of jesus he didn't answer with a statement 
he said go and tell john what you have seen the blind see the deaf hear the dead are raised and the gospel is preached to the meek and then he says blessed is he that is not offended so the moment there are no miracles the messiahship of the christ is questioned john himself the one who ordained jesus said go and ask him is he the messiah miracles confirm that jesus is the messiah god is not a herbalist he's not a herbalist that is ahead of other herbalists no wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name there are people who have names politicians have names businessmen have names. captains of industry gatekeepers of mountains have names but my brothers and my sisters there is a name it says there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved and it's in that name tonight that we will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness The miraculous manifests the glory of God and causes people to not only believe God but to trust God John chapter 2 and verse 11 the first miracle of Jesus what we call the miracle at the wedding of the Cana of Galilee he turned water to wine the Bible says this beginning of miracles this beginning of not this beginning of sermons not this beginning of discussions this beginning of miracles did jesus in cana of galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him believed on him we believe in the god that heals and saves and delivers that's why we kept the seats for you that's why we we knew you would come because the hand of God will bring you and we knew you would not be disappointed brothers and sisters there is a God in heaven God is not a herbalist don't let your pain demean him he is still the king of the universe the whole world lieth in wickedness Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good it takes the manifestation of the power of god to do good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him for god was with him for god was with him We're going to pray you have to convince yourself it's going to be a quick walk and we're going to cry to God and say Lord whatever I carried from my house whatever I carried from my place of work that I've brought before you it should not return back with me it should be clear and evident that I met the Lord Jesus Christ it should be clear and evident right where you are sitting you will soon stand up but right where you are sitting i'd like you to talk to the lord please be serious and be desperate lord i have come to you i've come to you i've come to you i've come to you my life must be changed my finances must be changed my destiny must be changed lord i've come to you as a pastor i've come to you as a prophet as an apostle there has to be greater oil upon my life lord i hear you are a restorer restore me online please make sure you are praying those outside make sure you are praying there is a god that answers prayer when the lord turned again the captivity of zion it says we were like them that dream 
and our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden the lord had done great things for them it says the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the negev turn again our captivity there is a god that can turn around the captivity of men pray doesn't matter where you are seated doesn't matter where you are connecting from the power of God is able to save to the uttermost father I'm praying that infirmity in my body must leave this night that financial situation must die this night that oppression that has kept my family down did the bible not say this is a victory that overcometh the world even our faith A miracle walker, God is a glorious God. God is a miracle walker, God is a glorious. shortly and I'll begin to minister by the Spirit your own assignment is to receive you have come let me tell you something there is enough grace to solve whatever challenge it is that has plagued you yours is to believe in the power of God it says if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God hallelujah praise the Lord a lady the power of God is going to come upon a lady outside please carry her and bring her now there is a lady I'm seeing I just saw light from in here right the power of God upon that lady Please bring her. Please bring her. And then bring, there's someone on this row. 
I'm seeing like like a smoke just going round and it's like it's locating someone the power of God is going to come on someone please speak the person and bring the person out you reign you reign hello from outside I crush the hand of captivity over your life in the name of Jesus Christ I crush the hand of captivity over your family in the name of Jesus I saw a lot of oppression over the life of this lady and in the name of Jesus we silence the voice of wickedness we silence the voice of wickedness hold on please the Lord is showing me something right now. I saw this while I ministered in Abel Kuta. I started seeing snakes on the ground. Snakes on the ground. And that's what I'm seeing right now. And this is, this is the manifestation of a spirit. And there are many families that are under this yoke. Whether you believe it or not, just let me minister to you. I'm declaring right now, the power of God is going to start coming on people that represent those families. Bring them out. You are not shouting anything. You are not saying anything. Bring them out. I'm speaking by the Spirit. The Word of God has been declared. There are families. I'm seeing serpents, snakes, snakes, inside and outside. Bring them. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. And the captives of the mighty, by the fire of the Holy Spirit, I judge those spirits wherever you are, represented in anyone here, represented in anyone here, I speak by the hand of God. You reign, you reign, hello, bring them out. I'm still on that case. The power of God is still locating people. I'm seeing snakes. Jesus I'm still praying we're not doing too many things tonight we're going to the root of many people's challenges I'm saying it again there are still spirits and I speak by the anointing of the Spirit of God wherever they are overflow one two three across the road I'm declaring judgment judgment upon those spirits the fire of God is coming upon you right now whether you are standing for yourself or for your family bring them out there is no escape for when his voice comes they come out from their hiding place Hallelujah. Now listen, there are people I'm seeing something that looks like a knife being inserted in people and I'm seeing people beginning to run just run when you see people doing that hold them and bring them 
The Lord is bringing deliverance. That one is not speed. This one is not the prayer for speed. I'm just telling you as the Lord is showing me. Right now I decree and declare. I don't know those that the Lord is cutting them free from every kind of diabolism. But I stretch my hands by the Spirit. I command judgment on every force. Judgment on every power. In the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God is coming upon them. You will begin to see them run around. Just running. It's, it's, it's not a, a making of their own. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Oh, 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 oh. My help has come. Oh, 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 oh. My help has come. Oh, oh, oh. My help has come. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction right now. Now we are ready to shout. Listen. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing what looks like a grave. And the Lord is saying he's delivering families from the power of the grave in the name of jesus christ and at the count of three any family whether territorially or by whatever connection is tied to the spirit of the grave i'm declaring at the count of three as you shout jesus the power of god is setting you free one two three the spirit of the grave the spirit of the grave the spirit of the grave I curse you by the God of heaven the spirit of the grave I curse you by the God of heaven just follow me this night now I'm praying for all those in front they came out because the Lord showed something I declare by the power of God that the legal access of darkness over your life is broken and at the count of three I speak to these spirits release everything you have taken from these families one, two, go, go, go out of their lives, out of their destinies out of their lives, out of their destinies I command a release I command a release I command a release. Release breakthroughs. Release open doors. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Please just pay attention and let God help you. You came here tonight to receive. Listen to me. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people you dare not go to bed. Someone must come in your sleep and try to sleep with you or it may happen once in a while this is a strange oppression of darkness and i declare i'm praying right now i'm seeing fire all over this place because there are many people that is the root cause of many oppressions in your life at the count of three you will shout that name again that is above every other name and some of you will feel something leaving you immediately i declare that all these spirits that molest the saints and manipulate dreams and visions at the count of three let there be emancipation one two get ready three i command those spirits go now strangers of the night strangers of the night help that gentleman strangers of the night 
Bring them out. Strangers of the night. I curse you by the God of heaven. Molesting the saints. Planting sicknesses in their bodies. Hello, Kim Madonna. a certain family here I'm seeing that they tied the family to the covenant of a stone something that has to do with a stone I don't know what that means and in what tribe but I'm seeing a covenant that has to do with being tied to a stone I don't know if it's for protection or for whatever but in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that any fraternity with the elements of Christ let it be broken now in the name of Jesus help them please let it be broken now in the name of Jesus fraternities with stones and elements and strange fires of the night be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus the mysteries behind the strange hardship of people the mysteries behind the oppression of people oppression of families doors doors are opening that's what I'm seeing in the spirit doors doors some of you will feel fire on your hands fire on your hands doors are opening two leaf gates in the spirit fire on your hand you will know by the fire that comes to your hand i'm seeing fire coming on people's hands that's what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit doors opening you must testify doors opening doors opening doors opening age long doors age long doors that have been closed for many years I'm seeing an angel of the Lord stand just at the back of this young man. Please shift, my friend. These four ladies, one, two, three, four. I'm seeing an anointing on you people. One, two, three, four. I don't know what it is that God is taking out, but I'm seeing like chains being taken from your feet, chains being removed. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I saw an angel stand there, chains being taken up from your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, chains being taken from off your feet. Listen, let me explain something to you. This is not just some disorganized jamboree. God is turning the destinies of men up. You will see people return with testimonies because there are forces. Emmanuel. I'm hearing the name Emmanuel. Who is that? Emmanuel. Please don't make the place rowdy, Emmanuel. We're going to pray for the sick now. There are four of you I'm seeing here. You have the call of God upon your life, but there are strange altars that are holding you down. In the name of Jesus, I lose you now. I lose you by the force of the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. 
I lose you. I release your ministry. Hear me, I'm speaking by the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I stand by this apostolic anointing. I lose you. If I be called of God, I lose you. I lose you from these forces. I lose you from these yokes. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are men that can be alive, let me tell you, but they are dead in the spirit. Emmanuel, I'm praying. We don't have time to minister individuals. Individually, but I'm praying for you. The Lord is breaking delay from four of the families with Emmanuel. No, no, once I mention your case, the power of God is coming upon you. You will know it's your case. I stretch my hands now among the Emmanuel's and the people delay 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 there is an anointing coming now is crushing that spirit just because I'm praying for Emmanuel does not mean it will not come upon you in the name of Jesus delay delay God is visiting delay broken by the Spirit of God Please help them so they don't injure themselves. He came to set the captives free. To set the captives free. Hold on. This young lady, lift your hands. This, this, yes, you. Lift your hands. I'm stretching my hands towards you. I don't know what it is that I saw, but I saw something like smoke. The other one, the smaller one with white. Yes, I just saw something like smoke coming out of you. And the Lord is saying this is oppression for many years. That has something to do with your abdominal region. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let that oppression go. Let it leave you. Let it go. Let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus there is a woman now i'm going to pray for people generally but i don't know how we we'll do this there is a barren woman in overflow three barren woman trusting god for the fruit of the womb please if if you can allow the woman to run and come god is instructing me to lay my hands on her because it's time for her to carry her child overflow three please let her run and come Yapone na kawo Sujata ne na kawo Sir King Salam Sir King Alchanda Yapone na kawo Maureen, I'm hearing a name, Maureen. 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 What is your name? Lift your hands. Where are you from? Shout Jesus loud as you can. Jesus! Let the power of witchcraft over your life be broken my dear look at me look at me shout Jesus. Jesus I crush that spirit right now in the name of Jesus and the man you see in your dream in the name of Jesus may you never see that man again please make sure you they don't why is mama here is she Maureen this woman I, I'll pray for you that woman come madam is that your daughter? Come, madam. Where are you coming from, ma? Let her come. Sir? Where are you coming from? I'm from area C. Area I'm C? No, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Mama, you are a sincere woman. But if I did not pray for you, huh? it's a bike that will kill you from the market in an accident. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this woman with a leather of potato and a bike man just comes to jam her together with a truck. 
and they just say survive by that the woman is dead i'm not a prophet of doom mama please don't be afraid in the name of jesus christ hold my hands i extend your life by the power of the holy spirit that the plague of death see let me prophesy upon someone here anyone here that the hand of death is upon you to see that you will not see the end of this year i'm praying by the spirit now i'm praying by the spirit and in the name of jesus anyone that the spirit of death is haunting anyone being haunted by the spirit of death i command that it is crushed now in jesus name what is your name my dear Maury, come you will look at a beautiful lady like this but in the realm of the spirit i'm seeing a human being but no face no face like this i'm just seeing a blank face like this let me tell you what this means it's a yoke of bad luck that people stand and cannot bless you you have what it takes to be blessed and rewarded the lady on yellow lift your hands there's the call of god upon your life there is a prophetic grace that is upon you and the lord is saying you are stepping into it right now i stretch my hands to you right now in the name of jesus may the lord bring you into that grace i'm still praying for her in the name of jesus i declare i'm seeing fire coming upon you right now and that fire will unlock a dimension of the prophetic in the name of jesus christ bad luck listen i'm going to hold her but a different person is the one that will receive before i pray for her this is just allow me do my my mad thing hold my hand in the name of jesus i'm not praying for her i'm praying for someone now by the spirit of the lord but the lord is saying i should hold her as i pray for the person lord in the name of jesus this yoke of bad luck i'm speaking now please help them this yoke of bad luck by the power of the holy spirit where good things don't seem to happen to you in the name of jesus let it be broken now 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 be broken now. now let me pray for you be free by the anointing of the holy spirit i take away this that i'm seeing and in the name of Jesus, you have an identity in the spirit that brings honor, that brings grace and dignity. In Jesus' name I pray. Where are these ones? We're going to pray for the sick. Your name is Maureen. Are you married? You are married? Yes, sir. But you don't have a child? Yes, sir. From Overflow 3? Yes, sir. Where's your husband? He's not here. He's not, but you're married? Yes, sir. Come and stand here and watch the God of wonders. I don't know you. Madam, from Overflow 3? You are from Overflow 3. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Why did you come? Your name is Maureen. What do you do, madam? Hold on. I'm a businesswoman. You're a businesswoman. Where? I used to sell at the young, um, random canoe. But right now, the business is... Cut do you know why I'm asking you? No. I must pray for you because this thing is not only you there is nobody doing well in your family your entire family this is what i'm saying is a spirit huh? except you open up something and miss even physical money used to get missing from you you will keep money and count it and found find out that it's not what you kept is that true if i'm lying just say i'm lying where are you from from a new anambra state i'm seeing the map of nigeria and i'm seeing the state anambra i'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state now i'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state anyone usually when god shows me this anybody who is from that state connected by blood the power of god begins to come upon them to bring deliverance it's a sign and a wonder i'm declaring right now in the name of jesus that anyone who is from that state and that region and there is any force and yoke that is fighting you be free right now in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus
Please help them. Be free in the name of Jesus. Anambra State, be free in the name of Jesus. I'm still seeing the map in my vision. Be free in the name of Jesus. My friend, that young man holding his hands, shout Jesus from where you are. The yoke is broken. I cast it out of your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, I need to pray for you. Don't feel bad. Look at me. You insulted a woman some years ago. And the woman told you it will not be well with you. It was like a joke. Truly the thing followed you. This is what God is showing me. Now, I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm going to pray for you. I don't know if it, the woman annoyed you or what is it. You insulted the woman and she stood and told you that it would not be well. Because what you were saying about her was not what she did. Hold my hands. The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, the scourging tongues of men. The scourging tongues of men. Except you know where you stand. A cause causeless shall not stand. But if there is a cause, it will stand though. It will stand. Are we together now? I will pray. Where are your siblings, madam? Hi. This woman, no. You are not here alone. Where are the rest? Call them. Just stand where you call. What is their name? AGK. Quickly, please. And Victor. AGK, come. And, and who? Victor, that is and Victor. Yes. Victor is not your brother. Victor is a small my boy. Son, yes. Where is he? Let him come. Because I'm seeing the boy. You are saying Victor is a little boy. Ah, uh -uh. are you married? Yes. You have a son. Yes. Your son's name too is Victor. Yes, he's the one I'm calling. Is the boy that you are talking yes. about? You said your brother. No, HK is my brother. Then Let the brother boy come. Son. As young as that boy is too, if I don't pray for him, he will start stealing. Eh? There are two boys, small boys, that will be delivered from this spirit. No matter where you keep anything, they must steal it. We are not condemning people. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. God is delivering people. To the pure, all things are pure. Nobody is calling any family a bad family. But this is a place where God is visiting people. Where is the person, please? Come, celebrate him as he comes. You're welcome, sir. I will pray for you. God is going to turn your family around. This is the little boy. My friend, how are you? Come. How old are you? 11 years old. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. I will pray for you. How can a nice boy like this and the next thing start picking things? Do you know, let me tell you, these small children that steal are not thieves. It's just that either by carelessness or lack of discernment, it was not dealt with because most of what they steal, they don't need it. That's how you know it's a spirit. Are we together? Yes. That's why it's important that parents lay hands on their children and speak and prophesy. Don't assume they will be spiritual by default. My friend, let me pray for you. Father, thank you for this adorable young man. And this guy has a great destiny. You see this boy? I'm looking at a star rising as I'm laying my hands on him. This is what the Lord is showing me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. You will be a great man by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold this woman. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, what do you do? A medical sales representative. You, you are a medical sales representative. Medical sales representative. Can I pray for you? You are a sincere person, eh? but this thing, they are just forces that want to destroy your family. I will pray for you. Eh? April, May, June. It will look like you held a charm. The way God will turn your life around. You believe it? In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. Madam, Come, the power of God is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare this thing that I'm seeing tied to your waist, I lose it right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, be set free now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the one trusting God for a child. Come. How long have you been married? Three years. Three years. Yes. No child. You too. Are you married? Five years. Four Five months. years. Four months. Yes. No child. No child. Doctor said after two surgeries, they said my husband cannot impregnate me. He did surgery twice. Don't cry. Jesus is here. Huh? You went through two surgeries. Where is your husband? He's at home. He's at home. Don't cry. Where are you from? Where are you coming from? Wasteland. You see, th these are the things that sometimes worry my spirit. Imagine the kind of trouble that this family will go through. Sometimes we take some things for granted. Imagine the advices. Someone now will recommend and say, go to a herbalist. Go and do this and don't cry, my sister. Two surgeries you went through. Mm. My head. Now I'm seeing something being removed from your stomach. Look at what is happening to her. Yes, she went through two surgeries. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit that says your husband cannot impregnate you in the name of Jesus I set you free now yeah. madam I set you free now I'm praying for the rest but I set you free now hold my hands come in the name of Jesus I declare supernatural miracle for you now release this woman now as I'm praying for you, I'm praying for your husband wherever he is. According to the time of life, may you return with your miracle children. It's over. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. My dear, let me, why is this woman here? You are married to madam? No child? How long? Four years and um, five months. Four years, five months. Where are you coming from? Jigawa State. From Jigawa State. Please come. Oh dear. Allah walk walk for all the stunning things around. Allah walk walk for all the stunning things around. Allah walk walk for all the stunning things around. Oh my God. Do you know why God is dealing with these issues? Because he has declared that is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness is fruitfulness from any dimension any dimension look at this woman look at these women crying i may never understand what it means for a woman to not be able to take in i think it's the equivalent of a man not be able to provide for his family that you come back home and watch your wife and children and they say that they were hungry and you are clueless about where bread will come from my sister, please don't cry. Who brought you here? You came alone? Sarah. Huh? Sarah. Oh dear. Put your hand on your stomach. Is she a Christian? She's, she's a Christian? Yes. Okay. It doesn't matter whether you are a Muslim or Christian. The Lord, everybody the Lord healed in the Old Testament. He healed them and gave them an opportunity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb. And I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness. Let it be broken right now. Look at this. Let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough this is what i'm seeing i don't know what it is that i'm seeing but i'm seeing something come out of you and you are coughing coughing something out in the name of jesus christ let it be gone now let it be gone forever let it be gone forever let it be gone forever my dear put your hand on your stomach what's your name blessing, blessing. where's your husband he's not here he's not here father in the name of jesus I don't care what the medical report is. We agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now. I decree and declare 
according to the time of life return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now i correct it by the power ah, i'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what i'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we're not praying at random we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from huh nasarawa state nasarawa state are you alone no I'm you came with who only me only you come just the woman i will pray for her we have to pray for the sick but how many of you have seen what god is doing here listen you see if you love the lord and you see god attacking in the name of jesus christ the lord just showed me something now i'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire and the lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people i decree in the name of jesus christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of jesus by the mercy of god let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now I'm seeing a family of one, two, three, four, five, six graduates. Nobody's employed. Six graduates. You are all graduates. Nobody has a job. Who is that person? Six graduates. Please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out. Six graduates. No job. Not one person has a job. I want to pray for you. You're the one for the fruit of the womb. Huh? I have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed i'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby i will pray for you because if i don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the lord is showing me and i'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam kano kano is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he husband sir please come there's that something the lord wants to do in your family don't worry he's, he's here he's coming thank you sir thank you for coming god bless you i want to pray for you you came from kano too you came from kano too sir i'm going to pray for you thing come out of you opportunity to hand their lives opportunity to hand their lives over you just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb. And I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness. Let it be broken right now. Look at this. Let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough this is what i'm seeing i don't know what it is that i'm seeing but i'm seeing something come out of you and you are coughing coughing something out in the name of jesus christ let it be gone now let it be gone forever let it be gone forever let it be gone forever my dear put your hand on your stomach what's your name blessing, blessing. where's your husband he's not here he's not here yes. father in the name of jesus I don't care what the medical report is. We agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now. I decree and declare according to the time of life, return with your child. Whatever needs to be corrected in this body now, 
I correct it by the power. Ah, I'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach. This is what I'm saying. You will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a, look at what is happening to her. A correction, a correction of whatever is wrong. In the name of Jesus. Why are they here? Fruit of the womb. Uh, we are not praying at random. We we'll pray, Madam, I will pray for you. Where are you coming from? Huh? Nasarawa State. Nasarawa State. Are you alone? No, I'm You came with who? Only me. Only you. Come. Just the woman. I will pray for her. We have to pray for the sick. But how many of you have seen what God is doing here? Listen, you see, if you love the Lord and you see God attacking. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord just showed me something now. I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire. And the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of jesus by the mercy of god let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now I'm seeing a family of one, two, three, four, five, six graduates. Nobody's employed. Six graduates. You are all graduates. Nobody has a job. Who is that person? Six graduates. Please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out. Six graduates. No job. Not one person has a job. I want to pray for you. You're the one for the fruit of the womb? Huh? I have to pray for you. I'm seeing something in your stomach. Have you gone to the hospital? You've spoken with a doctor? Don't be embarrassed. I'm seeing something growing in your stomach. And this is not a baby. I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you, you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me. And I'm going to pray for you. Where are you coming from, madam? Kano. Kano. Is your husband here? Is your husband here? Yes. Where is he? Husband, sir, please come. There's Daddy something the Lord wants to do in your family. Don't worry, he's, he's here. He's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You came from Kano too? You came from Kano too, sir? I'm going to pray for you. Number one, God is going to give you the fruit of the womb. Number two, God is restoring your finances. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. God is restoring your finances. Amen. This is a serious issue. As you are here coming now, the financial trouble you are into is only God that can bring you out. Amen. Is that true? God is going to help you. Madam, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, why are they here? Six graduates, no job. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, by your mercy and by your grace, let there be a sign and a wonder in the life of this woman. Just keep her down. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, everything that is wrong be corrected now. In the name of Jesus, sir, please can you hold my hands? In the name of Jesus, I speak over your finances. There is a grace that can restore and I release that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, let me talk to you and then we'll pray for the sick. You are the, both of you, where are you coming from? You are here in Zaria? Yes. And you are, yes, I know your face. Six graduates, no job. Yes, sir. Including you? Yes, sir. Come. No. But there are six people. Now. Yes. But there's no job for yes, them. Yes, sir. Can we agree that God will give them a job? Yes, sir. And you too? Yes. Let's pray. Come. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, there is an anointing that is coming upon you, eh? 
and is for the sake of your family in the name that is above all names i release this grace upon you and i pray let the embargo of joblessness be broken now even on both of you i use you as a point of contact to pray now something is leaving this lady's hand you something is leaving your hand i cost that yoke now in the name of jesus your hand is a symbol of your productivity and i declare in the name of jesus let there be liberty liberty for all of you liberty i open the doors of jobs in jesus name i pray why is he here you are a graduate six from where please from abuja abuja yes you are a school of ministry student madam let me talk to you where are you coming from natural state are you married bring the person that begins to laugh in the spirit the hand of God is coming upon someone The Bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tents of the righteous. Please bring the person. Let's save time. Father, I establish this victory over this lady's life. The oppression over your life and your family is broken now and broken forever. Broken now and broken forever ah, we don't have time our time is gone but the lord is showing me a very serious vision of a lady that entered a relationship with a gentleman and left him and the guy vowed i'm seeing this guy carry not you now i'm seeing this guy carry a photo and taking it to a herbalist in kaduna state Hello, Kim Matona. Hello, Hello, Kim Matona. whose name has been taken for any diabolic activity i stand by the hand of god whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. I'm still praying. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. This is what the Lord showed me. Carry the name of the lady and kept it there. That number one, no decent man will ever come and ask her out. And number two, she will never give birth. This is what I'm seeing. Who shall say a thing and it will come to pass? That when God has not declared it so. I reverse every pronouncement over anyone here in the name of Jesus. I want to pray a prayer. Please forgive me for tonight's miracle service. The way God is taking us. I want to pray. Shade and doctor, please come. The Lord wants to end an old issue in your family. Please come. This is what the Lord is showing me. This thing I'm seeing is as old as more than 60, 70 years. The Lord is opening my eyes to see now. Please, I want to pray for you. Those under the anointing, help them. Please, I'm just using two of you as a point of contact. But I'm seeing a spirit. This is an ancient spirit. 
the way this thing works is that men rise the moment they get to the zenith of anything they are doing they must die this is the spirit i'm seeing please listen i'm not i'm just using them and i'm ministering the way god is showing me these are not the only families with this thing but the lord is saying i should deal with it now provided you have not gotten to the pinnacle you no death will touch you but the moment you touch that bar you are going down and the lord wants to destroy it because god is using both of you to start a new program in the family i will follow the lion i will follow the lamb I will follow the lion. I will follow the lion. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lion. Bring that little girl. As small as that girl you see is. This girl you are seeing is a deliverer of her family. As small as you are seeing this, this little girl. Because this girl stands as an altar of righteousness over her family. And as small as she is, the devil wants to kill her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, I use this, my dear daughter, as a point of contact. That everything that is not the planting of God, I scatter it now in the name of Jesus. May God use this, our precious daughter. And truly may she be the deliverer of her family. In the name of Jesus. A lady is going to start running because I'm about to pray over a spirit that is in her family. And that spirit is going to start driving her to run away. So I'm telling you in advance, you are going to see the person stand up to start running away. It's, it's not even this lady I'm talking about. This is somebody in the crowd. You will not even you will not be in control of yourself. It's a spirit because I'm about to rebuke it right now. Father, I thank you for the Bonire family and by extension the various families. The altar that sits upon this family. Even the lawful captives came at Zakata shall be delivered even the lawful captives i break that yoke now i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood that ancient yoke that brings down great men over this family be broken i open up the door of increase rise to the senate of your profession i forbid the spirit of death once and for all in a moment in a twinkling of an eye an issue that is age long let me tell you this a mighty deliverance has happened to this family this thing i'm telling you fought their grandparents fought their parents and if not delivered now will still fight them If there's anyone here that this same spirit works in your family, you rise to a position and crash down. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, let fire land upon such individuals and scatter that altar, scatter that altar forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. It took words to establish the covenant that brought this family in trouble. Now I declare to you, a new order starts in your lineage. A new order starts in your family. Where children live long and they become successful. And that every embargo of witchcraft, once and for all, is broken in the name of Jesus. Madam, I can pray for you now. Where did you say you are from? Nasarawa State. Just, just keep her somewhere there or bring a chair and keep her. You are not from Nasarawa State. You stay in Nasarawa State. Yes, Where are you from? Ebony State. Ebony State. Ebony State. 
I want to pray for you. Am I wasting your time, please? One encounter with the power of God is enough to turn your life around. My friend, this man wearing um, you. Yes. Did you come alone? Who did you come with? Where's your wife? Come. It's time for God to change your life. Stand up, stand up. Please stand up, stand up. Where are you coming from? From campus, yes, sir. You are from campus, yes, here. sir. What do you do? I am lecturer in the university. You are a lecturer. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Sir, you are not supposed to be at this level now. You are a very brilliant man, you, but there, you are intelligent. I don't know you, all, you but sir. you are a brilliant man. It Thank even you, took grace for you to be given a lecturing job. Yes, sir. It's because there is no way they could deny you. Yes, sir. You are too exceptional. Yes, sir. And you are supposed to be abroad now. Yes, I don't know what has kept yes, you down. Sir. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. You are not supposed to be here, yes, sir. Yes, but sir. somebody carried your issue and put it under the table. You see, you see what we are talking about. That you carry a man's destiny see let me say it i'm praying to you from my heart that in the name of jesus whatever belongs to you and has been hijacked by the wicked hearts of men it must be released this night it must be released this night sir please stand up what's your department Political science, sir. Political science. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. You will know that there is a God in heaven. Amen. Amen. What do you do, my dear? I'm not doing anything. You are not doing anything. No, sir. I have to pray for you. Yes, sir. Huh? That trip abroad, you must go. Amen. Amen. Because there is an honor and there is a professor that God has destined that you will meet. Amen. And I'm going to pray. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I release you. And I release your destiny. Amen. Both for you and your wife. Amen. I decree and declare. Scale new heights in your profession. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. There is a friend in your life. And the Lord is telling me to tell you to be careful. There is a friend in your life. Be careful. I won't say more than that. Be careful. What God has joined, let no man put asunder. I'll stop there. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Madam, you have been here for a while. Let's pray. What are you trusting God for? For marriage. Who came from Joss? Joss. Joss. Where did you come from? Madam, where did you come from? Bokos. Huh? Bokos. From Joss. Not state of origin where you came from, that you left it and came. Huh? I want to pray for you. What do you do? I, I, I'm a secretary. You are what? I'm a secretary. You are a secretary? Yes, sir. Come, let me pray for you. One of these days, we'll just trust God and do a night vigil, honestly, so that we can deal with this issue seriously. You may think that time is being wasted until you see what God is turning around in your life. All these people came from Joss? Madam, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I will not have what they call that pregnancy that they'll have to do. Um, no, bridge is bridge or something like that. This is what I'm saying. All done. Let me pray for you. Come. You are sick. It looks like pregnancy. Like it's breached. This is what I'm saying. The pregnancy that looks like it's... That will open you up and carry something out. Where are you coming from? Joss. Just... What did they say is wrong with you? Um, multiple fibrosis. No. A man... Don't feel embarrassed. Can I talk to you? A man used to come in a dream. Huh? Yes. And sleep with you. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes. That's what brought this pregnancy. I'm a man of God. Don't be af afraid. You, you heard the story I told you now. Yes, sir. Madam, if I'm lying, look at me before the whole world and say I'm a liar. That you go to bed 
and a man comes and all of a sudden this started come of course medically you would think that okay you check it there is nothing there yet the pregnancy will not go how long has this thing been three years three years don't cry don't cry who did you come with may this place remain a place of solutions was it not the fallen angels that met with the daughters of men and they became pregnant physically and had strange go and listen to my teaching the mystery of the serpent and the woman my sister can i pray for you you believe in jesus look at this adorable lady look at imagine a woman carrying this for three years is that pregnancy it does a human being stay three years in the stomach are you married of course imagine what this this means to her marital life put your hand there father in the name of jesus christ look at this look at what is happening to the woman in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that every seed that has not been planted by god let it be uprooted in this body is it not written that every tree that has not been planted by my father it must be uprooted i uproot this right now in the name of jesus christ i uproot this right now in the name of jesus by a strange mystery may this thing begin to go down and disappear from this woman's body in the name of jesus christ just keep her down there madam let me pray for you what do you want the lord to do for you I'm believing him for a life partner. Life partner. Do you believe God can give you a life partner? Yes, sir. Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. You are born again. Yes. Father, the Bible says male and female, he created them. She's not embarrassed. She's standing sincerely and telling you that I came so that God will bless me with a life partner. I lay my hands upon you and I decree and declare may god bring a responsible man to your life Amen. you will not marry a man that will make your yesterday better than your tomorrow Amen. in the name of jesus christ i declare it so and for all these people standing i pray for them may the lord himself bring miracles over their life in jesus name i pray i may not have time to minister to all of you one by one please forgive me huh coincidentally i'm going to just tomorrow I'll be in just Saturday, Sunday. I'm ministering in a conference. I'm excited. I'll be in House on the Rock at Rayfield. Saturday and Sunday. I mean, just. But let me pray for you, all of you who came all the way. My dear, look at me. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. With all your heart? Yes, sir. I drive the boy that the devil wants to bring to your life say amen amen you you may not understand what i'm saying but let me repeat myself i drive i didn't say god drove him in the name of jesus christ as one who loves you where well, i drive any irresponsible boy that is coming in the name of prayer warrior to destroy your life amen in the name of jesus i'm amen. not looking down it is god's will that all men be saved but then I'm telling you that in the name of Jesus Christ, everything that would destroy your destiny, let it be far from you. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. For all of you, I may not know why you came, but let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. In the name, just believe what I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. God bless you. Please go back to your seat, my God. Can we still pray for the sick? How many of you are trusting God for healing? Let me see your hands out there. 
okay this is what is going to happen it's okay I'm, I'm going to pray for you 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 came you brought them okay I'm going to pray for you now you just relax now please because of time those under the anointing just leave them if there's no usher hold on a lady usher place your hand on that girl any lady usher release her now out in the name of Jesus let it come to an end now and forever release her destiny release her family in the name of Jesus Christ let there be restoration and let there be testimonies please this is how we are going to do it because our time is already gone we are going to do three things at the same time please listen number one you are going to be submitting your prayer requests number two those who are trusting God for healing in the various overflows please aside from those that I prayed for for barrenness if your reason of coming here is barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three I want you to come to overflow one I want to pray for you myself aside from that please you are trusting God for a healing miracle I want you to move to your various overflows so those at overflow one move to the front of your projector stand overflow two the same thing overflow three the same thing those by the roadside the roadside down to second equa join overflow two you can join overflow two please ushers protocol pr department coordinate yourself to help them please so that the people know what they are doing praise the lord those in here you can come you can come the lord bless you now there are going to be men and women of god scattered across these various places who are ministering under a corporate anointing make sure you are standing for healing please make sure you are standing for healing no 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 those for fruit of the womb come in please the main auditorium i want to lay hands on you by myself it doesn't matter what overflow you are if it is fruit of the womb please come the main auditorium i want to pray for you now please listen just a touch is enough you don't have to start explaining and telling the men of god this is a problem sometimes god can give them words if they don't don't worry just a touch and you will go back i want you to believe this that's why you came are we together while that is happening if you have your prayer request here you can just wave it and pass it let there be an usher okay um peace is here you can pass it let there be an usher or somebody please um the various departments coordinate yourself so that you are collecting this let's make it fast those online um you can use our social media platforms to submit your requests and we're going to pray on it right now please quickly quickly A Jimmy and a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. A Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. Um, Pastor Alpha and Benga will go to overflow three. Overflow three. Pastor Femi and Kenny and ima go to overflow two also extend to those by the roadside extend to those by the roadside did you get let me pray for you pastor lawrence come i will pray for you and then you will join those at overflow three in the name of jesus christ grace for you by the power of the holy spirit let the anointing let the grace of the spirit come upon you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen now please worship team you give us songs of the spirit while we are ministering and as soon as hands are laid on you you can go back rejoicing those who are seated don't be careless be praying in the spirit because god is solving people's problems while you gather the prayer requests if you are yet to submit yours, just wave it and there will be someone to reach you.
in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that within the next 10 or so minutes that we have, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone will fall under the anointing here. Once that happens, the power of God will start move to heal. Right here, those in front here. Okay, so I can start praying now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Praise the Lord. Please, everyone stand. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Whether you are inside or outside, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the next dimension of my life opens up now. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Please begin to pray. name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I like you to begin to declare that every request you have written here that by the grace of God this will be the last time you have to visit this issue please pray please pray our time is gone but let's make use of the time stretch your hands here and begin to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God every request that I've written here by the God of heaven let this be the last time may the Lord arise and solve impossible situations arise in the name of Jesus are you praying father that these Egyptians that I see today I see them no more forever the requests of those localized here and those who have posted their requests on our social media platforms we declare intervention we declare breakthrough we declare increase hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ we declare and we agree as a family of faith 
that this request will turn into testimonies in your life we declare that this request turn into supernatural testimonies the same way I am standing upon them I decree you stand upon every situation that is represented here in the name of Jesus Christ I know that they are still praying for a few people but let me just pray the final prophetic blessing on you because our time is gone It says the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night I decree and declare every economic hardship that is bringing the saints to their knees and causing them to compromise I declare that you are exempted from it now every prayerlessness represented in this place that the grace to pray seems to have gone down in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar anybody introduced by the devil into your life or your circle to destroy you I severe you from them right now in Jesus name I speak favor over your life and I declare in the name of Jesus walk in favor 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 therefore God has exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name it says that at the mention of that name every knee must bow I declare whatever must bow in your life from tonight let it bow right now let me pray for you finally and especially for those of us who are not within this city if you traveled far and came I'm praying for you now in the name that is above all names to all our visitors and all those who connect with us from far that includes those from our social media platforms I decree and declare whatever the issue of concern is that brought you here return with the answers now return with the answers now You will not need to tell people you came here. There will be the radiance and the glory of the Spirit upon your life. I declare that every door that has refused to open, even as the Lord kept revealing here, I enforce it and we call that door open now. The new month is the fourth month of the year. The number four stands for balance. That means that whatever is left that must be shown in your life, you are blessed here but not yet blessed here. You are blessed here but not yet blessed here. I declare completion for you now. May April bring you completion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you